Can you tell me if I'm live? Say hello in the comments. Hello. Hello, Gvine. Hello, Venom Spike 3306. That'll get outdated real quick. That username. <laughs> Unless that was like your 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 birth year of your elite commander. And what's up, Loot? How you doing? No, that isn't well, the intro is not KSP, but this is this is. Welcome to Dangus Industries. Dangus Industrial Space Program. Um, but yeah, we are I I thought okay, so Hey, no worries if you can't stay long. Uh, this is an off stream. I'm off of work this week, so I'm like, I'm gonna do an extra stream, but I want to do a game that's not Elite Dangus, but also is Elite Dangus because um, we're gonna be building um, a Sidewinder today. We're gonna, tr well, we're gonna try anyway. We're gonna try and build a Sidewinder in Kerbal Space Program, and then see if we can get it to the Moon or the Moon. Well, in Kerbal, it's called the the Moon Moon. Anyway, um, if you have played Kerbal Space Program. This is a sweet little game, although if you haven't played at this point, I'd probably just wait for KSP 2, which is due out any year now. I'm not really sure where it's at in terms of progress, but I am very excited for it. Um, yeah, of course, yeah, exactly. If you can't stay for the whole thing, you know, watch it tomorrow. Um, but, you know, if you have questions about KSP or anything like that, um, you know, pop them in the chat and I'll, I'll answer them at one point or another. But yeah, so um, basically Kerbal Space Program is a game where, you know, you have the whole, um, well, it's a fictional solar system called the Kerbal System. Uh, just full screen that, yeah, there. Oh, wait, no, that was full screen. Never mind. I'm an idiot. Okay, so, you know, here's the Kerbal System in all of its glory. And it's very similar to the Earth System, although, you know, you get a little bit further out, it's a little bit different. Elu being their um, sort of amalgamation of Uranus and Neptune, Jewel being kind of the amalgamation of Saturn and, and um, uh, Jupiter. Um, Drez is like, I, I don't know, I haven't been to Drez. Um, Duna is your Mars equivalent, M Moho is your Mercury, Eve is your Venus, and of course you have uh, some asteroids here by the way, they added asteroids in a, in a cool little pack. You can actually track them and land on them, landable asteroids, and I don't know if it's a modern op, but you can get a grabby claw and push them around. Push them into your space center, for example. Uh, but here is Kerbal in all of its glory. So it's a lovely little um, Earth-like world. And I would hope that one day, at some point, um, Elite Dangerous puts Kerbal as a system in the game. Uh, anyway, without further ado, let's just get rid of these tutorial messages. I haven't played this in a long time. Um, and yes, uh, the flag in KSP, I don't know if I can find a good one here. Outside the astronaut complex, it is a uh, Falcon Delacy. I figured I downloaded some elite flags, so like you can go. There's some power play ones, and you've got Lake On and Core Dynamics and the Federation and all that stuff. Uh, just add a little flavor, but uh, the, the flag packs are pretty easy to get. You can basically take any image and turn it into a flag and plant it on the moon or the moon, um, so to speak. But without further ado, let's get in here. So you can see also I've got Odyssey loaded in another window. I'm surprised that this is working, but you can see it there. This will be our model to work on, the illustrious Sidewinder you can see in the top uh, top right of your screen. Yes, that's what we're going to try and build in KSP. Now, it's not going to look like that. It's going to be as close as possible. But we'll try and go with a lot of the um, uh, choices, the style choices. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with um, one of these remote guidance units. That's going to be the core foundation of our vessel. And the main reason is because... Um, some of the custom parts are glitched. <laughs> this is the safest bet to like not have my vessel spontaneously decompose. And also, um, it's helpful to have uh, for purpose of, um, if you don't have crew and you want to autopilot, you need one of these cores. Now, of course, um, you know, how, where do we start, right? Um, I think the best thing is to kind of build a working ship and then sort of build the sidewinder design on top of that, right? We want to kind of iron out our cores. Now this would be a nice cockpit to use for um, something that's not a Sidewander. The Sidewander is not that sleek. That could maybe be the front of a Python if I ever do a Python one. But yeah, you can see there the lovely DeLacy flags. It's very, very nice. I like it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't really given much thought to this build, so we're kind of going to be winging it as we go. Um, but what I think will probably work is this Coppola, Coppola module. Um, and we'll sort of build around this, as it were, using this as our foundation. So ideally what we want to do is we want to make sure that we do have, let's see, we want fuel. Um, that's maybe a little bit too big for a Sidewinder. And this is, by the way, we're not building this to scale. Oh, is the music too loud? Okay, hold on, how about now? It's, 
or maybe hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just try moving the mic closer. Or turning my mic volume up. That way I can keep some music in the background. But do let me know if it is like way too loud. Cause I'm not good with the, the mixing. Cause I can't hear myself. All right, but so we've got a little couple of module. Now what do we want to do? So you can see here, I do have some mods running. Um, I'm not, I like a base one that allows you to add like planetary stuff. Um, and I've got like Kerbal attachment system. And also I'm not running um, the latest version of Kerbal. I'm actually running an earlier version. And the reason is because the mods, um, all the all my favorite mods did not get updated for the, the most current version. So uh, this allows me to do a little bit more. Um, we're just gonna throw some RCS fuel there for now. We're gonna move that later. But sometimes I just like to grab things from this menu that I wanna build with and just stick them on there. Um, now again, you gotta be careful in Kerbal because like liquid fuel is great if you're running a jet, but if you're running a rocket, you need liquid fuel with oxidizer. Otherwise, um, otherwise, when ain't no oxidizer, you ain't burning nothing. You, you're, you, the liquid fuel, fuel engines, you're a liquid fuel, that's what you are. Um, yeah, so we don't want liquid fuel, but we want something that's a smaller fuel tank. And oh my God, there's so many of them that I'm like, eh, that's, that should be okay. I mean, how much is that though? 180, that's not a lot of fuel. Um, okay, so maybe what we want to do is go with a bicoupler, but yeah, okay. That's about the same amount of fuel, to be honest. It looks kind of fancy. Um, that will give us the ability to have like two engines, which the Sidewinder does have. Um, now in terms of engines, let me just look at my reference image and flop this around. The back of the Sidewinder is going to be, I think, where we're going to spend a lot of time on because it's kind of got this weird thing where the two engines are kind of off to the side. So, you know, if we're thinking of our cockpit being here, we have to have the engines actually out on both sides. So this, this build that we're working on is just not going to work. Um, we would have to get these much further apart, right? Like, almost think of it like, like that, right? So how do we do that? Well, in Kerbal, many things are possible through being weird. Um, oh my. Yeah, see, I also got a mod called Tweak Scale, which allows you to adjust the size of it. This little thing looks like a bean right now. Okay, well, we do want that, actually. Hold on, where'd it go? I didn't, that, was, that must be an update that this thing gets kind of um, smoothed out. But that's fine, it'll be, it'll be okay. So maybe what we'll do is we'll have a couple fuel tanks here. Um, this is like why it must be so hard for Frontier to build ship interiors. So you have to figure out all the inner workings here. Um, but we can do that, and then we can do another of those little bunky boos. Yeah, these are, oh wait, yeah, these are actually from a mod, but okay, the question is, do these have, do these allow fuel to flow? I mean, if not, we'll figure it out, but okay. So that's looking okay, but I think part of the problem I have is with this cockpit. I almost want to get something that can be like that almost. Yeah, I think that actually is going to work a lot better. Okay. Now, we're going to cover this stuff up at the end. Yeah, get rid of that Coppola module. We're going to get rid of some stuff at the end, but we can consider this area between the engines and on top of the engines to be kind of like the interior of the ship, right? Now, right now, we've expect this guy with two um, of these nuclear engines. Now, these nuclear engines... I have something called Kerbal Engineer here, and this is a mod. And it allows you to see your, your actual thrust to weight ratio and your delta V. So right now, as it stands, um, basically your max thrust to weight ratio is, is basically one to one. And what that would mean is if, well, let's just try this actually. Hold on, let me just title this craft, Sidewinder. And we're gonna launch just to see how, how pathetic this is like this is not this is not a ship that is going to be able to fly around on the ground um it is a mainly space-based vehicle we will not give it uh permission to land on tenuous atmospheres but as you can see at full thrust i really can't do much now the good news is that these are uh parts that are allowing the fuel to flow so the engines are getting fuel now if we were to just you know go for a long time i'm going to try accelerating speed oh wait that actually shuts down the engines um, but if we were to accelerate, maybe after we burn off enough fuel, we might have enough uh, thrust-to-weight ratio to get off the ground. 
but um, no, we just wanted to make sure that the um, wanted to make sure that the engines would get fuel and just uh, make sure we're okay. All right, back to the VAB, the VAB as it's called in, in, in KSP. So this is the core <laughs> dynamic of our Sidewinder. We'll play on words there. Um, but let's just go back for a second. And, I, you know, I don't know if we'll go with the nuclear stuff, but let's look at the front of the vessel. So we know that we're going to want to have, like, three landing gear. Yeah, okay. So I think that'll, that'll do for its core internals. We'll get into the design of the last bit. We just want to make sure that there's, like, enough of a skeleton of a ship. Now, in Kerbal, the interesting thing is, you know, for, for craft to fly, number one, they need to have um, power. And so, for example, like, you can place solar panels around. Uh, we'll, we'll do all this at the, at the very end, but um, it's just interesting to cover now. And the other thing they need is batteries. Now, we're going to put maybe a couple batteries... Um, within the interior of the craft. I might even just slap one on the top and bottom of this thing. One thing you also want to keep in mind when you're building a spaceship is is um, uh, the balance of weight, right? If you have one side heavier than the other side, then it's going to fall apart pretty quickly. Um, okay, so I wonder if there is maybe an aerodynamic surface here. Like, do we want to add a little stupid nubby nose to it? <laughs> That's not very... Side Sidewinder has kind of a flat texture which we'll get it the problem is like the stuff I want to use to build it is going to be stuff like Elevon Elevalons Elevons and uh, they will affect wind resistance so that could be a problem later on um, but what we want to do before we get too far into the build is just at least put a few of these RCS thrusters and what these guys do is help your ship out maneuvering itself in space they're basically your um, Mono propellant thrusters. It uses a, a different fuel source. This little tank here, the yellow tank, that's our mono propellant fuel. We don't have that much of them. Um, and let me just read here what's in the in the chat. Yeah, KSPD. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Mm. So far, the small one is the one I'm taking to Sag A. You know, the one in the one, the one in the right corner. What Braben? You're taking Braben to Sag A. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You take a sidewander to Sajay. That is pretty ballsy. Um, okay, so the other thing we probably want to do is these inline reaction wheels. So what these things do is really um, give your ship torque and whatnot. Um, you want, like, essentially, they're they're uh, uh, they make the ship go roundy. So we'll put one there in the center because that'll be a good place to have it. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that we want to include at this point. I think it's okay to start building um, the shell. And how we're going to do this is really, really dumb. Uh, we're going to be using like panels and such. So I just want to get my reference uh, reference picture up. Okay, so you know, what we'll do is we'll put a couple panels and we'll put on symmetry here so that we can put two on at once. We'll put two like that. That'll be a kind of a nice little base. Kind of allow us to um, essentially, you know, uh, craft the sort of shape um, or the outline, right? Like when you're coloring and stuff like that, you want to start with the outlines of the character before you color the inside. Um, I seem to be able to put it like that, but I want to do that. Why well, you cannot do this? Uh, will you? Okay, now you can do it. Um... I always get so confused in the directions. Okay, perfect. As you can see with the symmetry on, we are, um, maybe it just needs a new one each time. The symmetry on, what we're trying to do is just kind of outline the shape of the ship that we will build off of. And I swear to you, this thing will fly and we are going to the moon. Uh, okay, no. No, 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 yes, yes, yes. Nice. Okay. So we're starting to see that sidewinder shape emerge. That little uh, weirdness of it. Um, do we want to... Yeah, because I think that we want to extend the front a little bit. Uh, do, do. Why? Okay, there we go. 
and one for the front. Maybe we just need to reduce that to one. Now the problem you'll find is like the symmetry is not going to be quite. Um, yeah, it's not going to let me complete that as as it is. But this is this is good for now. Okay. Um, won't those thrusters end up inside the ship? It doesn't really matter. Um, in KSP, it doesn't matter. Like you could, I could even take these thrusters and let's see here. I could grab this and push it inside the ship, and it'll still work. I'm gonna undo that. Okay. Um, so it doesn't really matter where they are, inside or outside. There's some games like uh, Space Engineers as well, where that kind of stuff doesn't really matter. Um, which is probably a good thing because I think if it did matter, people would it would be a little bit uh, tough to swallow. Um, nope, I don't want this. I want this mode, and I just want to try rotating the craft. That's what it looks like on the bottom. Um, but already I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, it's starting to take the shape. It's starting to look okay. Um, what we are going to want to do is then, uh, let me see here. So if you hold down the shift key and then start making adjustments, you can see you can do smaller movements. And this is the crux of how we will um, begin to form the sort of ridges of the Sidewinder. I kind of want to put that like right on the corner. Dude, honestly, it's it's really hard to keep uh, symmetry accurate in, in, in this game because uh, especially when you're building weird stuff like this, you're just trying to throw a bunch of stuff at it, right? Uh, the game does not know what to do. Okay, so we're gonna just pop this around like that. No, 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 this one. Just put another layer there. Easy now. Okay, so you see, it's gonna look, okay, no, that's not good. <laughs> we're taking that away. Uh, we'll just try another one of these and then see if we can just like, can we just flip you? Oh no, I screwed it up now. This is not an easy game. But yeah, we could go asteroid mining. We could um, track down an asteroid. Is that those are... Let me put it this way. Like, I'm a little bit out of practice with this game. <laughs> and um, I feel like if I were to try mining an asteroid, uh, it would be the death of us. We would not make it back. But we can get to the Mun, because I've been playing a few days, and... I find the Mun is not too hard to get to. I can do it. I can pull that off. Uh, oops, hold on. Okay. There we go. Let's close up the bottom here. I know it doesn't look like much now, but you just wait. You just wait. It's going to look super pretty. It's going to be the prettiest Sidewinder that ever Sidewindered. I kind of feel like I want to go... Oops, no. Yeah, okay. We'll do another one of these over here. Kind of feel like this buddy here needs to... Oop, what happened? Oh, you're fine. This buddy here needs to chill out. Um, we want it to come forward a bit. And... To stop doing the come go no go back go no, why can't you listen to me okay sorry people I'm having technical difficulties with myself here I keep forgetting which direction is which key it honestly is kind of hard and disorienting sometimes to re remember I want to make it go that way okay come out there you go. Okay, this is going to be a real hodgepodge sidewinder. <laughs> this is, like, okay, you've seen my landings, G-Vine, but uh, have you seen my ship building skills? Because this is going to be... Okay, now that's not going to work. I don't like that. We're going to try a different way to do that same thing by attaching it to these puppies. Yeah, 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 okay. All right, that's much better. Okay. Um, and now looking back at our reference ish image, so the Sidewinder kind of has like, okay, let's let's flush out first the um, where these are gonna go, and no, we want it to go a little bit down, 
like that. Exactly like that. And then put another one of those guys over on this side. You can see the cockpit's a little more smushed, but we're starting to have that sidewinder shape to the front. That's the important thing. Um, yeah, Crimson Gamer's like, better watch out, I mean, I'll build an FDL with railguns. Well, you probably can, because there are weapons mods for Kerbal Space Program that you can add, like, lasers and shit. And, uh, apparently there is a mod for multiplayer called Dark Multiplayer Mod. Um, I have never tried it myself, but if uh, someone else is willing to download and install an older version of, uh, KSP and try that mod out, I'd always be down to do it. Um... I always thought KSP is a cooperative multiplayer game. I, I, I really do hope that's sort of the plan for the second one, because that would be dope. Love the idea of, like, you know, let's build a space center together and strand our poor little astronauts on distant planets. Okay, so we're just being very careful here. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to extend these bottom guys out as well by one more tile. That way the engines are kind of just poking through and close. Well, okay, Here's so here's the, the terrible secret of KSP is that, you know, nothing needs to really line up. You can just move shit. <laughs> as long as you move it, like, okay, I moved that one, let's see, three over. Then this guy, I will also have to move three over. Was that one? No, one, two, three. And then it should balance out. And even though the pipes are gonna be unconnected, it seems it's, it's all fine. Just don't worry about it. These are Kerbal Space things. This is not real physics, okay? Don't have to worry about real physics in this game. Oh, okay. I want to clone this and bring... Let's start working on the bottom. Let's just create a nice little... Um, I think like... Like almost like a, a cocoon around our internals. Now, I probably should have thought about giving it more fuel. I haven't even given any thought to life support. But you know what? This is Dangus. We don't need no stinking life support. Uh, okay, make one there. Be very careful and put one there. Okay, this should be good. We're looking good. Uh, how about fuel scoops? Um, it's a good question. No, I think um, you're 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 pretty much stuck with whatever fuel that you have in this game. Um, you know, it, and really, like this game requires a lot of um, preparation, right? Like you really need to run the Delta V for the mission. For, okay, I want to go to Jupiter. Uh, how much fuel is it going to take to get me there and back? And if I want to land, you know, I got to factor that in, right? So there's a lot of planning that goes into this game, uh, especially if you're trying to get further than the Mun and back. Um, getting to the Mun is not so hard, but when you start getting to the other planets, you are in for a rude awakening if you have not um, done any preparation. Many times I've stranded Jeb Kerbin on a moon of jewel. Uh, okay. And we're just trying to flush this out. I feel like, okay, no, we've gone too far. Okay, so we've got a nice big fat bottom here. I mean, it's kind of roughly a sidewinder. I wish it would come out a little bit more, but I think it's okay. I think that's, I think that's fine. I think that's our, that's our core shape, and it's a little hodgepodge, but so is the sidewinder, damn it. Um... Like, we're going to get the shape down, and then we'll go to the details. Now, of course, I can still go in here and, and build, but once you do kind of cover it with things, it's going to get harder and harder. Now, before we get too far ahead, we need to talk about struts. These little things called struts. Um, the, 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 the core philosophy in KSP is basically this. Um, if you can't get it to the Mun, more struts and more rockets. The struts will prevent you from essentially blowing up. Oh, that's not going to work. Um, they will keep your vessel together. And actually, you know what? Let's just save and I'll show you how terrible this is going to be. Like, it's going to fall apart instantaneously. That could be fun, actually. Let's watch Sidewander Boom Boom. Yep. There you go. <laughs> it's looking okay, though. I think I'll... So I, it's looking better than I possibly imagined. It's still pretty shitty. But yeah, I'm, I'm playing KSP and open. Come, come fight me, bro. Uh, okay, so maybe there's. Okay, I do want to actually look at life support here for a second. Here we have our utility. This is like a lot of mods that add um, uh, samples because you can actually scan the planets, find resource deposits, and 
go and land on them. They also have your parachutes and such, but um, we're not going to design this for a return, <laughs> return trip. I can also put like a guitar in here. I've got some fun mods in there. But life support, this is one that we probably want to look into a little bit. Um, as you can see, like, and, and really I think what we'll do is we'll um, put like canisters and stuff like that on after, but especially when you get to the back of the sign wider, if I could just flip my reference issue around, ref <laughs> my reference image, you'll see there's a lot of, you know, crap on the back here. That's where you find your locks, your liquid oxygen. Um, so when we get to, I think the end, we'll, we'll, we'll just spam up a bunch of canisters to make it look a little bit cooler. And try to actually put like things like heat sinks in the right possible places. Yeah, now do a carrier. Okay. Um, I don't think I have enough time in my life to do that one. Um, okay, before we start working on the back, I want to just get the shape down. So the next thing is really, okay, when we get to the sides, the, the Sidewinder kind of has an area that sort of comes um, down. So let's add more panels, more struts, more panels. I was just talking about the importance of um, struts, but we'll we'll just do a couple more things before we get into struts. So I think that will be a good angle, and then what we'll do is take um, the one by one size panels and just put a couple of them. If I could just like, I'm like, I would like to. Okay. Uh, then that no. No, 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 yes, yes, okay, perfect, ish, good enough is really what I meant to say there, okay, we'll take two of those panels, and then maybe, it's got a weird gap tooth in them, so we will just nudge you, nudge you in there, can you go, no, 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 you went too far, Hmm. Apparently that's like that's how it goes. Uh, how about you? Okay, that'll close the gap. It leaves a little bit of a gap at the front, but that's fine. Now, when we clone the parent object, we will have all that lovely accoutrement, and then we can just slap these down as we go. I'm gonna say this is also like a prototype Sidewinder. Like, ima I imagine that this is like. Um, Falcon DeLacy in the early days trying to figure out what should a Sidewinder look like. This is not a, uh, this is the prototype rough version, right? Okay. Uh, let's just take a step back and, yeah, we're getting there. Oh, what happened to our, oh, there it is. I was like, where's the top of it? Yeah, that was the bottom. Okay, so we pretty much just want to do the same thing with the top. So we'll grab this here. And if we can just very gently place it in the right spot. Hmm. Okay. We're going to have to probably modify the core template. There, wait. No, how about... I feel like it needs to dip down more. Like that. No, it's not sidewinder enough. It needs more of a slant. We're going to just say this has a ship kit, okay? Because <laughs> I'm not going to... I don't want to spend like forever trying to perfect this. It just needs to be somewhat flyable. No, I, actually, this is not going to land on the moon. I'm going to crash into the moon. That's what's going to happen. Okay, get rid of you. Hold on. Let's try that again. Uh, okay, that's the one, and then just bring it up. We'll do like that. Is that enough of a slant? It's enough of a slant. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. Okay, and then clone, clone, clone. Put it all along. Just gotta build this out. Now, if you haven't ever had the pleasure of playing Kerbal Space Program, this is a really fun game, and what I love about it is it teaches you a lot about orbital mechanics. Like, not saying you could, like, fly a spaceship for real. Oh, hold on. What have I done? Do not go there. Um, you could not build or fly a spaceship for real, but you get, like, you know, the crash course introduction to the 
I guess the kind of concepts that you would need to understand to be able to do the real deal. Oops, 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 what have I done? Come on. There we go. Okay, so, I mean, that is starting to look a little sidewindery. Maybe it looks a little long in the tooth, like I should kind of maybe chop. Yeah, I think I'm gonna chop off this last layer of stuff. Just give it a little bit more of that sidewinder shape. Bye 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 bye. And we'll just want to maybe tuck the engines in as well, um, so that they're not sticking out too much. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lovely, nice and symmetrical. Uh, now, as you can see, my thrust to weight ratio of my delta V has gone down um, quite significantly. This might be a problem. <laughs> like, even if we're trying, like, okay, these engines for one are not great for landing on planets. I'll just say that now. We may want to consider have it, giving the Sidewander a little ship launch fighter, <laughs> which would be kind of neat, actually. Uh, but hold on, let me, um, so you can see, like, there's still some space inside where if we want to um, add some stuff, like, it would be interesting to try and just, like, cut out one of these squares and uh, create like an SRV bay. Oh, that's tempting, but I feel like that's a lot of work. Now we could also do really cool shit, like just put a seat right there. <laughs> what hell of a view that would be. Um, hold on, hey, hey Google, air support on. I gotta turn my air, air conditioning on. I have a, the, them uh, sure. smart home the air support on. Thank you, thank you, Nova. I wish that you could rename that, that shit and call it Nova. I do notice the Sidewinder has one of these puppies. Okay, we'll get to the placing of the things once we're done with the body. I think we still have a little bit of work to do on the body. We want to close up um, the rear of this and we want to uh, just fill in these little gaps here. But actually, before we do that, we should just work on like the core internals in terms of like um, making sure that we can actually fly this thing. So I think what we need is a little bit more fuel. Um, and there's a couple different approaches we can go with, but I think the one we're going to do is, uh, let me see here, uh, a baguette. Oh, that's nice. That, that could be, this could be some nice external decoration, and that is liquid fuel, but not a lot of it. You can see just by, um, adding this, it does increase our, no, it actually decreases our delta V. There's actually so little fuel in these, um, tankers that just the weight of them will make us slow us down so we'll want to go something else um now my thought was too is just maybe because like the sidewinder does have and hold on let me just see if i can enlarge it you can see the sidewinder does have kind of engines on it um like, like the lateral engines so maybe we can kind of i mean there's one part of me that wants to like just put like cheat shit but Oh, you don't have aircon? Oh no. Yeah, honestly, I didn't for the longest time. Um, I used to have it like built into a place in my old place, and um, when I moved, I thankfully got um, air conditioning. Um, I got it like I had to buy a unit and, and like install it in the window, all three steps. I felt like a, a real man installed an air conditioner, but um, I think I might actually cut a couple of these and see what happens. What would that do for our thrust to weight ratios and delta V? Why can't I clone you? Okay. So that does increase our torque. It does increase our thrust to weight ratio and lowers our delta V as you would expect. But that's okay. We want to consider some of these ant fuel engines, like a certain obsidian ant. And I think the real problem though is that we need more fuel. So we're gonna have to cram some fuel in there some way or another. Uh, let's see here. So this is everything we have available. That's only liquid fuel. So again, you gotta watch out for liquid fuel because it looks all nice, but then you try and uh, do anything with it and you're kinda screwed. Okay, so this would add um, four tons of mass, but um, has about as much fuel as, like these have 180 and 220 and this one has 440 and 360, so more fuel than my actual fuel tanks currently have. Let's try and see if we can add it, um, like in, oop, what have I done? 
I'm gonna add it like right in here. This is the problem with putting the skin on first. It's like trying to uh I just want it to attach. Okay, maybe I can do it from this side. Come on. Just want it to not attach to the thingies outside. I don't know if anyone knows a better way to do this in Kerbal Space Program. I want it to attach like right to that top thingy, or you know what? It doesn't really matter if it's inside the ship, does it? Okay. <laughs> like I said, it's uh, the cosmetics don't matter if it's inside. So there we go. Our thrust weight ratio has done got, gone down massively, but our delta V is in much, much better shape. Still not really. Oh, oh boy. Okay. We m might want to just make that a little bit not so crappy. <laughs> That's not gonna work because <laughs> it's not gonna be balanced, and you're gonna. Um, Feel it when we try. Okay, so I think what we need to do then is find the root panel. Let's take you off and just put you, put you here. That should give us an opening to then properly do this, or not. Okay, that's better. Where'd the other one go? It has disappeared. Alright, we'll clone you, buddy. And... Should be okay. And that actually kind of creates some cool um, ridges on the top, so you can see that is very sidewindery. So that's good. It was meant to be. Alright, we'll put you back. And as you can see, these um, pieces here are very, very... Um, sensitive to movement. Like, I don't know why why you do this to me. What did I attach it to? Maybe this thing. Obviously not. Um, okay, maybe we'll just leave you off for now while we are working on the interior because I don't have to like do that multiple times. So okay, so we have much better Delta V, but the next thing we need to worry about is just our thrust to weight ratio. Right now it's about 0.32, and if we're trying to land on the MUN, I ain't gonna cut it. Um, so what we might want to do is actually just in the middle here, and I know this might not be canon to the Sidewinder, let's just go and actually check our reference build. And since, yeah, we might as well work on the back of the Sidewinder for a bit. Um, really what we should have in the middle is a door. Um, it would be kind of unfortunate if one were to enter a sidewinder to find themselves um, facing an engine, but I think that's just what we have to do here. Um, what I want is there's a tiny little engine. What is it called here? Is it the Spark? Get out of here, Kerbal Engineer. Uh, the Spark liquid fuel engine, this will give us, well, let's see. Uh, in terms of Delta V, a little bit, but not really. Oh, we can actually put them here. So that would bring us up to 0.42. I would like to have at least, um, you know, 0.7. I know the MUN is not like crazy, crazy. So let's try these liquid terriers. Okay. So, hmm. This is where you have to make the tough decisions. <laughs> like, of like, I can't really test this until I get to the MUN, but, um,. That looks okay. Like, I don't know if we're gonna be able to land with that kind of thrust to weight ratio, but by the time we've landed, we may have burned off some of the fuel. So it may be okay. And something is looking off center here, and I really feel like um, we're gonna get kind of screwed, but still it'll be. Okay, so we gotta keep in mind, this is the bottom. And this is at the back of the side wander. So let's just start by, um, where are dim panels at? Let's close up the back. You won't be able to see those uh, secondary engines, or maybe you just will. Okay, maybe you just will. I'm okay with that. Uh, and then we will attach. Oop. Uh, 
as such. Lovely. This <laughs> is such a such a retarded sidewinder. <laughs> I'm so happy with this because it does not look good at all. Um, and okay, we're just gonna also is that the right way? The right way that I want it? Yes. Good. Good. Oh wow, look at that. It knows what I want. Intuitive design. There we go. That's the back of our side. <laughs> we're gonna put more stuff there to decorate it a little bit later. Um, well, actually, one thing I do want to get kind of right is Kerbal does have um, thermal control systems. Now, these are unfolding. Like, if you extend them, they are <laughs> quite massive in, in some cases. Um, like, I wish that there was a way... Uh, okay, so there we go. That's, that's just, like, regular heat panels. So we'll put a couple of these... Oops. What happened? One there, one there. That's sort of symmetrical. I'm trying to maybe align the end of these. The problem is, like, again, you get a slight angle on your cam and you really have to look there. And symmetry is great when you're building um, a symmetrical rocket, but when you're building a, you know, a lopsided monstrosity like this, you know, it, it ain't the same. All right. Um, so what else does the Sidewinder have? So let's just, again, let's look at our reference here. We've got um, some LOX canisters there. More heaters, but we might not worry about heaters. We're going to put some solar panels there. Um, the door, I don't know if there's actually like a door in KSP, but we could maybe put a seat there. Just like for some guy to hitch a ride on the back. <laughs> um, but really, there's not too much to it. So that's kind of, I think... I think what we've got is okay. We've given it more engines than it has any right <coughs> to possibly have, but um, we're going to take some liberties. It's fine. Um, and yeah, in terms of doors, now, technically I could put... Um, now, where is it? Is it in couplings? I could put, like, a docking port there. And that would allow me to dock the Sidewinder with things. Space docking is something this game does very, very well. It's actually pretty awesome. And yeah, this this back is like off center with the core of the ship. Something's gone horribly wrong here, but it's fine. Um, the real quest testament will be, will it fly? Um, but as I was saying earlier, I do want to put some just decoration. So maybe we'll take these, do, 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 maybe a couple mono propellant tanks. And we'll slap one over like this and we'll tweak scale to make it, you know, more compact and more fitting for a Sidewinder's size. These are the details that matter, you know. Um, also, it did seem to... We'll to go with a baguette tank, even though these are crap. Uh, I don't know what they're... Like, they look interesting. They certainly look spacey. Uh, and we'll, again, we'll tweak scale that down. I think that's the right size. Now, that does give us a little bit more... Um, Delta V, assuming that everything um, works, but it does lower our thrust to weight ratio. That is always something you got to worry about. Okay, what was I talking about before? Struts. Okay, so the other important thing is, as you saw by putting this thing on the landing pad, it's going to fall apart if there are no struts. So we're going to come in here and we're going to just like strut the fuck out of the interior. <laughs> strut the fuck up. Um, this in Kerbal is, is, you know, paramount, right? Like, if you want your vessel to survive, you must strut everything. Um, and again, I'm sort of building this in a probably inefficient way. If Scott Manley was watching, he'd be like... Um, for many reasons. But uh, just in terms of, like, build efficiently. Like, I really should have ironed out the core of the vessel a little bit more... Uh, before creating the exterior, probably. If I had to do this again from scratch, I would start from the inside, finish the inside, probably even test the craft because like there's no guarantee that this thing is even gonna make it off of Kerbin, right? Like this is going to be an aerodynamic nightmare. Um, but honestly, sometimes it's just best to just start winging it. And that's kind of what I felt like doing today, just winging it, playing uh, Kerbal Space Program for the first time in a long time. I kind of recently got back into this game um, 
was just taking a little bit of a break from Odyssey stuff and thought, like, what other space games do I have, a, have not uh, played in a while? And I remember how fond I was for Kerbal. There we go. So, we might want to just do a little stress test. Let's just save the vessel. Ooh, hold on. If we don't, if we don't put this back, then it will be gone. So let's assume it was attached, like, right there. Why will you do this to me? Okay. You look normal there, and then all of a sudden I try to put you here. And you're freaking out, like... Okay. It's like you don't want to behave. Okay. Why you do this? Okay, so I have to, like, manually figure this out. Hold on. This is my skill. This is not gonna make sense. Okay, hold on. Fuck it. Get rid of you. Uh, for now. Well, that's easy to redo, to be honest. Trying to move a piece that's already like predetermined, it's not gonna fly. So let's just see if this thing holds together on the pad, if those struts, oh, look at that. Look at that. Her prototype Sidewinder is not falling over. Now let's just try and see what this looks like. So, obviously my thrust to weight ratio is below the minimum acceptable thing. Um, where is my delta V? So you can see my delta V up here. Right now it's about 255 because all this gravity atmosphere that I just can't get away from. Uh, and also I'm finding that it's very hard to move the vessel. So I probably need a few more reaction builds. Um, but I love the little smoke effect. And we can just see the lovely Delacy flag backwards. Because, you know, flags do that. You can just imagine, this is the test of the Sidewinder Mark 1. Right? Before before they had Sidewinder Mark whatever the hell that we fly, <laughs> this was the original deal. This was the first prototype ever made of a Sidewinder. We're watching history get retold. Um, okay, I do. Hmm, I'm just thinking like, okay, we do want more reaction wheels, so I'm gonna grab one here, place you on the nose, place another one up there. That'll give us a nice little bump outside of the. Um, like again, I'm not, I don't mind these little things sticking out because they actually add a little character and flavor to our uh, ship skin, so it's not just a bunch of gray panels. Um, speaking of gray panels, though, that's probably how it should have been built in the first place. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, haha, uh -huh. that was easy. Okay. I mean, this is as pretty as I think it's gonna get, to be honest. Um. Okay. So, another thing I just want to do here is I really want to get the, um, I want to get the front of it. If we just actually go back to our reference image and up to the front, um, Sidewinder has not only a landing gear on the front, but which we'll worry about after, but this little antenna uh, sticking out of it from the front, right? So you want to get that detail nailed, because, you know, this is looking 100% accurate anyway, and if we're not adding these little details, uh, people will scream at me. Now, we could just slap a freaking satellite dish on top of it. <laughs> Imagine if the Sidewinder had one of those honkers. Um, so we'll put one here, and then we're gonna tweak scale this. I mean, that might be a little much, but hold on. We can then offset it a little bit, and just push it down a little bit. And of course, this puppy, I believe, will this extend? Oh my god! Well, that's a happy Sidewinder. Yeah. Uh, how's it going, Nix? How you doing? Uh, oh, there goes the money, you naughty boy. Uh, I up chat decided to build your own side. Make sure you have the instructions the right way up. Um, about the instructions. I mean, are there instructions? Because I don't, I don't, I think I'm following them kind of closely. I mean, it's, it's looking okay. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's a, it's not um, top grade engineering, but. For what I'm capable of, I'm kind of happy with it, you know. And yeah, I know it is. It's like a 30 second chat delay. Um, take it up with YouTube. I didn't do it. 
wasn't me. Um, it does kind of suck, though. But, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll look at um, being on alternative platforms, shall we say. It's something that I, I, I think is, like, a goal. Uh, like, I'm still kind of, like, at the phase where I'm enjoying streaming. And I'm enjoying that it's, like, low-key and kind of random. And I don't have to, like... You know, it's not like, like like something that I still enjoy. It doesn't feel like work, right? I never want it to feel like work. If it starts feeling like work, I'll just stop. Um, what am I doing here? Okay, that. And we'll just do maybe what I don't know. This is not really the front of a sidewinder, but honestly, like you can see how crazy these stupid things are. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die on my sidewinder hill here. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit of a patchwork monster, but. That's fine. That's probably what the original Sidewinder looked like. If it was, um, if it was perfect, then there would be no need for the next uh, second design. Screw that. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do this. But also, like you know, keep in mind, I'm also. Um, a spaz when it comes to reading the chat sometimes when you're deep in concentration and I got it in like a, a different window it can be hard to see uh, okay we probably want to bring this like such and then over this way and sure I mean the corners probably <laughs> a little work okay that one needs to be more uh, flat is what I need. Like such, but also... Uh, yeah, that works. Perfect! <laughs> it's gonna be kind of a smiley sidewinder. It's gonna smile a little bit. But that's fine. It's a happy ship. It's a happy little ship. And it's having a great time. And we're gonna bring it to space. And nobody's gonna die, I swear. Uh, we want to go this way. Um, yeah, you have to flap, sl slot flap A into slot flap B. I think a lot of this is just like, okay, I've got a square hole, I've got a circular hole and a square, uh, block to fill it with. Um, well, if we hit the square block with a tri uh, with a hammer enough times, it'll turn triangular. And then we can use two of them, uh, to plug that circle. But, well, don't you just get a circular block? Are you insane? Those things don't exist. Um, no, that's not going to look very good, but that's fine. No, 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 no. Uh, okay. Problem is like, okay, and hold on, I've got snap on, that's the, re I'm like, the whole time I'm like, why is these things not snapping? They're, they're like overzealous to snap onto things they really shouldn't want to snap onto, but I think I've solved that now. They should just be able to, yeah, it's, it's a little easier to place them when you don't have a snap to grid function on. Um, that looks like a sidewinder to me. That really does. Uh, you've never played Kerbal, but are there any angled pieces, pieces you could use for the slope section? Not really, no, that's the problem. Is uh, You can see here, even with some mods, like, you know, I've got, like, pre-built stuff that would be smooth, but that's not gonna... <laughs> that's kind of funny, but... No, like there's like engine mounts and stuff like that, um, which we'll get into because obviously we're not this sidewinder is not getting itself into space. It's going to need a whole thing um, uh, around it, right? Um, just for now, I want to actually put the landing gear on. I want to see how that's going to look. Um, we'll see if that looks good. Uh, let's just move it this way, or no? What are you doing? Try that again. Which is the bitter one to use? That one, or that one, or that one? Okay, obviously we're gonna use the biggest one. I mean, we could use this um, this version if I could possibly, uh, but it has wheels on it. And part of me goes, we can race the sidewinder around the moon when we get there, but the other part of me goes, you're not even gonna get to the moon, buddy. Uh, you're gonna die in space. And you may think that that's um, a terrible thing to say, but it's just reality. <laughs> it's, this is what's going to happen. Um, 
Okay, we just want to line this thing up, maybe like... No. No. So there we go. Okay, fine. Good enough. And we'll start retracting, which means it just folds up into the ship! Like, it's just gonna, like, fold out of the ship. Hopefully it doesn't tear the ship apart in, in the process. Um, but yeah, so Kerbal Space Program, actually, interestingly enough, this game is now officially done. Um, in the sense that, um, like, for the longest time it was in development. Hold on, where do these second gears go? Let me head back to my reference. Just under, on each side, approximately under the engines. We're looking for that triangle. I wish we had the sort of... It looks like the Sidewinder is ready to ski. And by the way, in Elite, you can get so close to your ship now. You can get awesome angles now that they've gotten rid of the, the blackout camera, minimized it, or just like redone um, how the camera system works. And I'm super stoked about it. Um, super happy with Frontier for taking that feedback to heart. Um, okay, so we probably want these things to be about there in terms of location. How do I, okay. I want to get it to up there and then, nope. I mean, <laughs> it kind of looks backwards. Is this even going to line up with that now? So we probably need to make this go in like, let's give it a couple, right about there. And we could also actually rotate it from here. Do one of those. And that looks good. That looks good. We'll go with that. And we'll throw another one here-ish. And like the other, we will have to offset it. Again, this is sort of the magic tool where, like, honestly, it's a little bit cheese in this, where you can just throw something inside of something else and it continues to work. Oh, I'm so happy with the camera suite in EDO. It's just like, even though it's not fully fixed the problem, it's fixed it 99% of the times that I want it. And, you know, they could have just not done anything at all. Um, but they were lovely and, and went and did that. So, cool. Thank you, Frontier. Made my made my day with that update. Really, really did. Um, what is this? Oh, flatbed. So again, I've got some weird mods on here that I haven't really, like played around with too much and uh, I'm worried about using too many mods um, like I've got this Kerbal attachment system that like you can build things um, on the month but I'm worried about crashing because uh, this game can be quite unstable like here's a little what is this a Kerbal Kerbal, fallen Kerbo knot. Like you can literally just like have a mod where you can put a dead, um, dead astronaut in the game. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think this is looking pretty good. Um, now again, of course we could do this and just um, let's go in here, find our core part, which is the module here. I think, this, I think this leg might be a little crooked. Let's just try, oh, no. Nope. Let's just try and straighten this leg out. Doesn't seem to want to cooperate with me. Again, it's just in a weird spot and I want you to come out towards me, but you're not gonna do that without like going in one of two directions. And then I don't want you to be... Okay, hold on. Wait. This is probably where you go in and rotate the mother. There we go. That's a little easier. Okay. It's still not quite... <laughs> like... <laughs> Let's just launch this and see how it looks on the... Ca on the, uh... <clears throat> the camera suit would be actually dope. If there was like... I think that Elite needs a photographer class. I think they need camera modules that you can take in-game pictures and submit them to Galnet. Oh my god! Um, hold on. What happened to my leg? Uh, one of the legs just spazzed out. But I mean, look, that's that's very sidewinderish. This is this is this is working. This is working. A rental sidey. Well, Nick, I say it, this is like the prototype sidewinder. This is like 
I'm role playing as like Falcon DeLacy building the first ever Sidewinder and trying to trying to just make it work. Um, as to the validity of uh, 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 whether or not this is canon, well, I'll leave it for you to decide. You can use your head cannon. Okay, so this thing needs to come down slightly because it should be like I think a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how this is going to freaking land. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to do, uh, and just before I do another little test, I want to get these little... Where is it? Yeah, liquid ant engines. The Sidewinder very famously has, you know, um, engines on each corner. And the problem is, okay, first of all, I want these to be in their own group because... I just, I kind of want them as ornamental. For some reason, this will not let me copy and paste that guy. Because the, the problem with these engines is they are not going to freaking work. They are going to throw everything off, but I want them to be there for accuracy. Because as you can see, accuracy is very important to me in this monster build. <laughs> that looks terrible, but I don't care. I don't care what you think. It's, it's beautiful to me. The back is actually looking pretty slick. I think the back looks looks all right. It's the front that's a little hodgepodge, but everyone needs a little hodgepodge in their life. So yeah, those are just going to be ornamental engines, but they got to be there. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So let me just go back to my reference image, back to Elite, which I've got like Odyssey running in the back. <laughs> just for a picture-in-picture -picture image while, um, so yeah, that's what I was talking about. These little, let me just make it a little bigger for you. There you go. So you can see, like, these these engines here, there's one on either side. So we've got those for scale. Um, we've got some locks on the back. We've got our heat vanes there. Um, we are going to need to put some solar panels. just wonder if there's anything on the bottom. Like, I was thinking about doing a cargo hatch, but... I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be possible. Weapons. Um, I don't have any of the Kerbal mods that have weapons, but we're going to think about it. But yeah, you can see here, this is also, these are the fuel scoops, right? Instead of fuel scoops, I think what we're going to go for are going to be, that's where the solar panels are going to be. Because um, we just, we need solar panels. So we'll stick you back in the corner, reference if image. Um... And there, you can see it's basically identical. I mean, I think this is perfect, but uh, we can still add some things. Hold on. Okay, so we'll start with solar panels. I um, wanted to add them. Oh, where'd they go? Uh-oh, it's fallen over here. Okay. No big deal. Just give a few solar panels there. Looking boss. Looking like a boss winder. Okay. Um, so, I mean, the other thing, too, is, like, well, heat sinks, right? Yeah, I know. Um, the problem is, like, okay, well, I've got heat sinks on the back, but they're radiator panels. Like, this game doesn't have heat sinks, but where's the heat management? It has heat shields, which, you know, you could throw a heat shield on there. Uh, like, imagine that with the front for a second. And um, for re-entry, that's, that's going to be very important. But I don't think we're going to get back in the... <laughs> I don't think we're getting anywhere in this, to be honest, but... We're going to try, damn it. Okay, so... As much as I... Well... Let's just make sure that we're happy with this. So, again, the problem I find here is the thrust-to-weight ratio is at 0.55. I kind of feel like that needs to be more. I think we need... We have very low delta V as well, um, with all the stuff that we've added. So, do we want to add more fuel? I think it's going to be hard to, but we can try. Um, what I was thinking, though, is rather than adding... Where is it here? There are small fuel containers. Those are monopropellant. Um, the problem with the small fuel containers is they tend to not add as much as you would need. So maybe we'll try... 
don't know, let's just try this. Like, these are really, like, yeah, that doesn't really, that just lowers my thrust to weight ratio, and I get, like, five extra delta V. It's not gonna work. The problem is, what I really need to do is I really need to get, um, I think I know what I need to do. Now, I wonder if, if, would tweak scale... Um, this is the problem solving that NASA would have to deal with, right? On a much less risky, smaller scale, but it's essentially there. Um, <coughs> like, you know, NASA also could, like, custom order parts. They don't need to, like, work with limited stuff here, but... Um... So I'm wondering, if I were to do something like this and tweak scale it down, oh my god, that does affect the fuel. I was thinking, like, I could just, like, put tiny tanks in there with a lot of oxygen, but no, like, if they're going to be there that size, then they're going to have that much fuel, but if not, then you're screwed. So my other thought was to just get rid of these nuclear engines, because honestly, they are quite heavy, and replace those with more of these lovely, um... What are they called? Liquid poodles or whatever. And again, I'm finding it hard to sort of get in there and do my business. Uh, we're going to just try to orient it the right way, first of all. There we go. Just barely get them in there. Okay. So now our thrust ratio... Okay, so this is improved. We've now got up to 0.61 thrust, rate, uh, thrust to weight ratio. Um, with 1,200 delta V, so we actually gained um, some fuel efficiency there and better thrust ratio. So then my thought becomes, like, should I add another um, set of thrusters? Um, let me just make sure, like, all these thrusters... Oh god, no, no, no. It's happening, it's happening. These two are good. What are these? What are these two? Probably some of the ones. What are these two? I don't know. I'm gonna move them up there. I don't. I would think like we should only have four engines, and I know those four, and the rest of these are probably these ornamental thrusters, which are literally just there for 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 kicks for 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 uh, uh, sexiness. Um. Okay. Back is still looking. It's looking a little more disorganized now, but. Say la vie, say la vie. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think this is, like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this is this good? Four thrusters on the bottom and top? Um, what do you mean? Like, like these little guys? Or, serious, four thrusters on the bottom and top? Or just like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four? Because I could try and add something um, below that, but honestly, that would be a little hard at this point. I'd have to tear the whole ship apart just to get to it. But I think this is okay. This is okay. It's not going... I, I'm telling you now, um, the problem is more like, is it going to land, right? Okay, so this does kind of bother me. I kind of want something to represent a cargo bay. Let's see. What, I, what, can, I, what can I add here that might be even just like symbolic of a cargo bay? It's not really looking good, but... No. There's no point in adding something that you don't need. Um... Mm, like, I wish we could just, like, tweak the, um... The look of some of these panels, right? Like, if I could just, like, make one slightly darker, but I don't think that's really gonna work. Um... I mean, we could just, like, girder them up. Say, like, this is... Just leave it open. And be like, danger, do not enter, but... You know Kerbals, they're just gonna find their way in there. Um, yeah, screw it. We're just gonna make a girder zone. That's the cargo hatch, okay? And it feeds right into the cargo bay. <laughs> uh, it's true. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you... Well, hold on. You wanna... Loot, you're saying, um... 
but the society does have multiple thrusters. Well, let's just go and, and take a look, right? And they're not multiple thrusters, really. If you uh, let me make the image bigger. See what you have here is you have um, two thrusters, right? These big long uh, cylindrical stuff, and then these are heat sinks. Um, then you got your fuel. I mean, technically speaking, no, that's not an engine. What is that? What even is that? Who turned the light on? Uh, and what are those? What are those holes? Those are just like weird finger holes. <laughs> But yeah, then you've got a door in the middle. So it's really just like two thrusters, but then the Sidewinder also has these um, lateral thrusters, right? Which would be useful for atmospheric landing and stabilizing on planets and such. And there's a CO2 scrubber. Hmm, I wonder, do we have, um, because we don't have life support on this damn thing, so maybe, hold on. Uh, let's go back to Kerbal. Yeah, bottom and top thrusters. Yeah, I've got, I've got. Oh, hold on, I'm not in Kerbal. I'm in Elite. Um, I've got them here. I've got um, that guy and that guy, but they're just purely ornamental because they're. That's gonna be too long to just figure out how the hell that's supposed to work, right? Um, but yeah, I do really need to get at least some basic life support so we don't die like five minutes into this journey. Um, and like I said, the best way to do this, I'll just take like some hex cans here. And we can sort of just slap them on the wings for... It doesn't really matter where they go. Um, I think we'll do a three can... A three meter can? No, that's way too big. Um, yeah, 1.5 meters. For oxygen. Or, sorry, life support supplies. Excuse me. And life support waste. Um, we are going to want a lot of that because you'd be surprised at... How much waste these things generate, right? Uh, I want to flip you around, whatever. We're screwing like accuracy at this point. We just want uh, to put stuff there to make it look cooler. Yeah, that looks cool. Oh yeah. Uh, so that's our waste and then water. Water is gonna be another important one, which we'll just slap a couple here. And, oh wait, I forgot to put one on the other side. What is this thing? That is food. Tell you what, I'm gonna get rid of the food there, put more water, because I think water is ultimately a little bit more important than food. But we'll take food and, ooh, that's too big, too big. Just kind of cram it in here somewhere. It's right under the, under the hood. Have your snacks right there. There you go. <laughs> Looks like a little uh, dog with its bone. And again, it's lopsided, so hold on. Let me see if I can balance that out. Otherwise, we're going to have some issues. Okay, so... Again, our thrust rate ratio went down again, back to 58. And this is where I'm thinking, really, to just slap on another set of engines. I mean, I could just throw them here. And that would create... That would bring our delta v. That would bring our thrust to rate ratio down, actually. So, no, we don't want to do that. That's crazy. Okay, so the engine is so heavy that the output to, um, like, can we make these bigger? Ooh, we could. Ooh, and if we made them both bigger, that's all we need. Okay. Okay. So then, hold on. So let's now push them a little bit back. A little bit down, a little bit this way. Same with you. A little bit back, about there. A little bit down, a little bit sideways. Just a little bit more back. There we go. That looks about right. Ish. Now can we just move the wall back a little bit? We can. And only till about there before it looks weird. Okay. Um, so maybe we can just redistribute this here just so that it doesn't look cheesy. I do like this little tool. This was not in the original. Like, I played Kerbal back when it was in its early, early alpha. 
and um, it came a long way. Um, the biggest thing about Kerbal, though, was the amazing modding community. There are so many good mods for this game. Um, a lot of them are kind of obsolete now. They never got updated with the final game, which really disappointed me because, um, man, there were some good mods for this game. Uh, ones that could allow you to build, like, you know, interstellar craft that added new solar systems that you could travel to. I do have a mod for the hyperdrive engine, but I'm pretty sure that's broken as hell. Hmm. Maybe we should put it on the sidewinder. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. Hold on. I think we might be a little, like, top-heavy. So we can use our engines to straighten shit out. Oh! What blew up? I mean, look at that. We are moving. Let's try, um... Let's see if we can... <laughs> I mean, it's not broken. Something blew up, but it was probably something unimportant. If we actually just go to um, recover vessel, we'll see. <coughs> A damage report. And what's up, Space Mercenary 07, sir? How are you doing? I'm doing an odd time. I figured, you know, I just wanted to try a different game, and screw it. It's, uh, I'm on my vacation. It's Tuesday. I'm going to do some Kerbal Space Program. Uh, and oh my god, it's been an hour and 15 in the, in the vehicle. Okay, I didn't get a damage report. Damn it. Okay, so then nothing really blew up. We should not be worried about it. So our goal is really, I think, like, I don't know. Would you guys say this is this is good? I'm just going to put a few more um, solar panels around. Because um, if we happen to be pointed the other way and we lose power, it's not going to be very good. These are probably going to break because they're on the bottom of the ship. So the problem, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, the problem when we land on the moon is going to be that um, our engines are pointed that way and our landing gear is down here. And the way we're going to have to land is kind of vertical and then hopefully land forward onto our um, gear. What's probably going to happen though is the entire craft's going to blow up and disassemble on the moon and we will die. Um, stay with me. As long as we quick save, try it a couple times, uh, and then lastly, I'm just gonna add a few more struts because literally, um, you can never have enough struts. Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna say that this is close enough. <laughs> oh, is there any like accoutrement or something I can put on here? What is this? Containers. Oh, okay, that's for like the. Um, uh, I could put like a cardboard box in the cockpit would be great because um, that would fit a sidewinder cockpit but uh, there is your life support stuff and again if we were building a base we could build like carbon dioxide strippers and you know we have carbon dioxide strippers that sounds like a bachelor party for air um, I could put a taco on the ship um, yeah you know what why not have a taco on the ship what ship where did it go where did my taco go what ship does not have a taco on it somewhere? I don't know, the taco really does not want to let me put it on the ship though. Yeah, like it's actually way down here. Come on, taco. Alright, you know what? We don't need a taco. Ooh. Ooh. A bomb? I mean, just in case, we do have a self-destruct on a Sidewinder, so I think this is this is accurate. Yeah, then we'll put it right at the front of the ship. Does that work? Hold on a second. Um, cannot be attached to other parts. That's probably the same thing. Yeah, so the taco... Okay, so actually what we would need to do is put a, like, container. So let's, like, put that cardboard box maybe, like, near the cargo bay. That would make the most sense. If I could just see, uh, maybe we can just do this from down here. Yeah. So cardboard box. There you go. There's the. It's an inventory system. Now can we put um, tacos in the box? No. So where the hell do we put them? I would like to put snacks in box, please. But not there. As you can see, like, if it doesn't move with the box, it ain't moving. Maybe you have to be on the... 
Actions, or crew. I don't know, I'm not really seeing inventory here. Well, you know what? Our astronauts will just have to go without snacks. That's just gonna be how it goes. But I think we are comfortable with this. Okay. So, uh, the next thing is, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna probably have to bring it to space and see how it does, and then, um, well, make some refinements. Uh, what we want to do is just flip it back into the upright position. Lovely. And let's just make sure that we do start our legs retracted. Because they will disrupt the airflow. Okay, so there's our basic sidewinder. The sidewinder M kit Mark 1. Okay, uh, what we need to do is we need to basically um, start by throwing a decoupler here. Um, that's a little big. We'll go with the next one down. There we go, that's more appropriate. Um, and I feel like it needs to be down a little bit, so we're gonna kinda cheat. This is gonna be really janky to drive, but okay, that's that works for me. And a decoupler obviously like will um, uh, decouple the ship. It will, uh, the, the uncoupling, the great uncoupling of, um, of ship turrets. Okay, so now we need to find like a two meter fuel tank I think like we could put one of the, or yeah 3.5 meters or whatever we could put that there and I think that will do uh, let's just throw an engine on there and see what engine we want probably the skipper okay so now this is where you really get into Delta V here right so we can see that this stage which is stage 2 has about 0 0.80 Delta V it's not that much, but when we're in space, and this will really be the engine that gets us to the MUN, um, we're probably okay with that. Um, yeah, I think that will be okay. Um, above that, though, what I am going to do is add a couple more reaction wheels, because at this stage it'll be very hard to uh, work with. And just for the sake of it, um, I'm always paranoid about batteries. So I'm just going to throw, like, a million batteries up here. On the, oh, what, what happened? There, you go there. Okay. That makes me a little more comfortable. Cool. Now, what happens is actually when your engines are active, your battery recharges. But once you stop moving your engines and you, let's say, put yourself into time warp mode, um, what happens is you may find that uh, your ship runs out of uh, um, um, power and then you can't do shit, and then you're dead. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Now, um, when it comes to building these lower stages, I mean, there is a lot of different ways you can go about it, but we're just gonna go kind of go a little nuts here. Uh, we'll probably go with four extension arms. And we're gonna switch back to snap to grid, because for symmetry, you do want to be kind of right on the money. And at the edges of these, like you're gonna see my build style here is a little bit, um, chaotic. But we're going to throw decouplers there. And now what we can do is we can create um, another row of... Get, 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 get in my face. Okay. Move, move, move. Coming through. Space engines. Okay. That looks about right. And actually we might want to make that a little bit down a little bit. Because it is like touching the sidewinder. These things when they do explode they're going to or when they do separate like they will blow my shit up um hmm. problem is like i can't really put an aerodynamic cap there so we might want to even move a little bit further down to about say there let's throw on some tippy toes that way uh our giant <laughs> we have four giant space penises that will bring us to orbit and we're gonna need more fuel on the secondary. Like it, the, the rule of thumb is obviously, as you increase the weight of the rocket, you're increasing the demands of the fuel. So we'll add another thing there, and we're gonna put more powerful engines on this. The mainsail liquid fuel engine. These puppies have quite a lot of thrust. As you can see here, our first um, stage here now is a 1.53, which is one and a half of the of the. Um, weight of the rocket, so we should be able to escape Kerbin with that, and about 3,000 Delta V. But we're not done. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I mean, the Sidewinder is not going to be very aerodynamic, so I think, first of all, we're going to talk about um, how to do this fuel properly. So, 
I'm actually going to add a fuel duct from each one of these um, external fuel tanks to the middle one. And what this means is that as these uh, tanks go and this engine burns as well, which we're going to put them in the same stage, um, and we will see here that now our thrust to weight ratio has moved up a little bit and our delta V is about the same, but these will now feed um, fuel into this tank. So as this tank depletes, these tanks will replenish it, right? Uh, that way, when I do decouple these, this tank will still be completely uh, full. He already has the end a bit part. <laughs> yeah, Sidewinder MK5 end a bit. Uh, it's yeah, it's the type. It's the type 17,000 and, and a half, really. Uh, okay, so like I said, struts, 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 struts. Anytime you have more rockets, you got to add more struts. They don't need to look pretty, but it's always a bonus. Uh, struts, of course, when you decouple, will just um, eliminate themselves from the gene pool, so they're quite nice that way. And we'll just maybe do one that goes a little bit further down, because these are quite far. Okay. That should be okay. But we're not done. Because we also want to add boosters. So we're going to just put another... And my thought is... Mm, because this craft is going to be pretty unstable, I want there to be some good room or just a little bit more breathing space between um, the stages. So I'm going to add a little nubbin there and then add the decouplers on top of the nubbins. These ones get a little bit more out from the... It doesn't look pretty either, but like I said, it's uh, I'm not worried about aesthetics in this. Which Now, I could go with these Clydesdales and these boosters are pretty freaking serious. Like, let's see here. Just on, on their own. Yeah, of course, I don't want to decoupled the damn thing on its own. I'm just going to put them in their decouplers into their own stage. So right off the bat, just the boosters. If I just fire the boosters, that gives me 1.3 thrust to weight ratio and 1600 delta V. If I combine these into the same stage as these rockets, that gives me a total like thrust to weight ratio of 2. <laughs> I mean, that might be a little insane to be honest. Let's do it. Oh, I should probably also put them the right side up. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let me just show you what would have happened here. Let's just launch this and see what happens. This is going to be kind of fucked up because um, the, rockets, the rockets are pointed at the wrong end. Is it smart for huge flames to go next to four fuel pods? Yes, because in science, anything is possible. As long as you don't, um, you know, uh, screw up. As long as you're fine. Okay, so all right. Oh, wow, Mac Jab's working. I didn't know if that was working or not. So all off the bat, you can see like it needs more struts because, and this actually is gonna probably destroy itself. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, and then second of all, rockets need to go other way and uh, probably need more struts from the sidewinder to the main rocket. But we have survived, so I mean, that's a good sign. That's a good sign of solid construction ship, is that we're not dead. So, okay, a few more tweaks to make, just a little bit, but... <laughs> you can see where we're going with this. This is not going to be a stable flight, and I don't even know if we're going to get it to space, but we will try. Uh, okay, so pop that to the other side, put back your, your symmetry on. Okay. As you can see, we really need to stabilize this crap. So, stable. Stabilize using the power of struts. The power of struts. Okay. Now, we also saw the Sidewinder itself was pretty shaky. So, we're going to add struts from here. It just, you know... Yeah, see? Okay. That will hit on all sides. That's good. But uh, we're not done yet. We're going to also add struts to the tippy toes of these rockets. And then we'll add another set of struts to the boosters. And then we'll add another set of struts from the boosters to the tippy toes. There's so many struts. Just, uh, okay, no, that didn't work. So let's add it from the tippies onto the boosters. Okay. And then we probably want to make the boosters a little bit more aerodynamic. That would be nice. Beautiful. Okay. So this should work in theory. So I also want to put some 
landing stability enhancers, and we're just going to throw them right here in the middle. Uh, that means the whole rocket will be a <laughs> help from this one point. Like, these four points connected to that one fuel tank are balancing all the weight. And there's way more weight outside of... Like, the Sidewinder weighs nothing compared to this crap. Um, I, I'm going to put a couple more struts, and I'm actually going to take symmetry off you to there. And the other side as well. And this will keep things nice and stable, nice and nice and compact. So, the only problem I think is I don't know if we've got the Delta V to get to the moon. If we can get to orbit, then we can always uh, send up a refueling, design a refueling craft and uh, make our own little fuel rat and head up there that way. Um, but all right, let's give it a real attempt. This is going to be attempt number one at getting a Sidewinder to space. <laughs> or a proto Sidewinder, I should say. It's not a real... It's not, uh, it's not, I'm not a real Sidewinder. Was that Shibuka thing from back in the day? And the broadcast. I'm a, I'm a real boy. Oh my god. Yeah, so it is chugging a little bit. Now keep in mind, I probably should close Odyssey at some point or another in the background. Because <laughs> Odyssey itself is quite a hog of resources. And uh, that might... Uh, you know what? That actually is a really good idea to do right now. I'm going to do it. So we'll just take one more look. One more look at our Sidewinder here. Just, just to get perspective here. So that's the Sidewinder. It is the starting ship in Elite Dangerous that um, everyone gets to start with. What a beautiful, beautiful creature. Um, and in a moment, we will just exit, quit to desktop, earn arcs. And when this closes, we're going to see my version of the Sidewinder. Uh, I thought they fixed this thing where it just hangs forever. Nope, wait, there we go. Lovely, lovely. And here is our version of the Sidewinder. <laughs> it's like the Sidewinder in spirit, really, but this is going to be fine. All right. So first thing we're going to do is turn our SA S off, on here. Now, we're not... Uh, should we bring people on the Sidewinder? Because right now it's robotically piloted. Um, okay, I do see a problem with the stage, so I, actually we are going to go back for a second. It should run faster now that um, Elite Dangus is closing. Okay, the last thing we want to do is just adjust the stage so that these landing clamps will go off uh, when we activate our engines initially. But I think this is looking good. Alright, so who wants to fly? Uh, let's see, I'm not going to use my Jeb, Jebediah, Bill, Bob, or Valentina, who are your kind of like... Um, your core guys, but who we want to fly? Let's see. Maybe Gustus? This sounds like a job for Gustus. <laughs> I think Gustus is going... Maybe someone could go with him, though. Maybe we can send him with a scientist. Um, Mimon. There we go. Gustus and Mimon will be our Sidewinder pilots. Um, okay. Let's do this. We're going to the Mun. We're going to plant a Falcon de Lacy uh, flag on the Mun. Uh, or, or we will die trying. This is just creative mode, by the way, so, like, don't worry. There's no resources, I'm not losing any money. The, the, these cripples will die, um, but it's kind of cute. It's like uh, lemmings, you know? All right, so right off the bat, you can see those landing legs give us a heck of a lot of stability for this launch. If we were relying on uh, lying on the launch pad or, like, uh, being on there, then you would see that, like, it would be on these engines and one of them would probably blow up and then the mission would be over long before it starts. But what a beast. That is our Sidewinder deployment rocket system. All right, without further ado, let's throttle up maybe to about 75% because the boosters will do most of the work. And let's let her rip in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. And oh my god, it's not spontaneously decombusting. That is a good thing. We're going to raise thrust to 100. Just give us as much uh, speed as we can at the start. This is looking good. Bye-bye, Kerbal. Kerbals, here comes Sidewinder flying into space. Um, and you know, the game is not... Uh, it's a little antiquated in its graphics, but there is KSB2 coming out soon, and I'm really super friggin' excited. I'm so stoked. I'm going to lower my thrust a little bit. Oh wait, no I'm not because, uh oh, uh oh, I knew this would happen. We are doing a rapid, unplanned, uh, so 
So the problem here, I think, is that um, something in the design is not super even, but maybe we can recover. Yeah, we're recovering. Yeah, no big deal. No, 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 not again. Okay, cut thrust, cut thrust, and activate thrust. Um, so this might be a little bit of a hiccup. I don't think we're going to make it to space unless we can just get control back and nope. <laughs> okay. It's a little bit lopsided. I think it might be, it could be one of a couple things. It could be the sidewinder just being not so aerodynamic. It could be a balancing issue. Um, yeah, Viper Claw, I am going to be uh, attempting a landing on the Mun if I can get to space first of all. Okay, so let's get rid of these solid boosters. Oh no, we've lost one of the engines. Okay, um, abort, abort, abort. <laughs> okay, I think we're gonna go back to the hangar and try this again. Um, it would be fun to kind of watch their, watch their, how their like run ends up, but. Okay, so there's a few things that we could think about doing here. Now one is probably because what's happening is as the fuel is draining, uh, the rocket becomes very top heavy, right? So, there are a few things we could do. Um, my first thought is maybe to extend the middle bit, because that's probably part of the reason why it's so top heavy. So maybe what we can do here is add another um, decoupler here, and add a fuel tank under that. This is like, we're gonna try to get into space, and this is patchwork engineering, and uh, do not try this at home, people. This is not the proper way to engineer things. Actually, we need a smaller decoupler, sorry. Uh, do, 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 do. Is it this one? No, that's the big one. It is this one. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so... And then I use the big fuel tank. Yeah, screw it. Fuck it. <laughs> It'll work. Uh, okay, and then I'm just going to do that, because why not? Because that'll be fun. Um, now this would be a separate stage from the boosters. And what we're probably going to do is rather than have this fuel feed into that section, we'll have it feed into here. Um, and actually we'll do that again so that it's actually even on all sides. Ah! What have I done? Okay. It's fine. Fuel into there. Okay. So, I don't know if this is the right way to approach this, like, am I just delaying the inevitable? But I am just following the core Kerbal philosophy, which is if it doesn't work, add more rockets and more thruts, uh, more uh, struts. It's pretty much all you're supposed to do. It's the solution to everything. Um, and hopefully what that'll do is keep our um, bottom and um, top weight a little more even. I'm not sure if that's gonna work, but um, again, these side rockets will be feeding into this guy. Now, uh, we are going to want to take this rocket and put that here so that when that decouples is when that rocket fires, not when, um, don't fire while there's still a, something attached below you because the rockets will do heat damage and eventually uh, burn through, which probably also is going to disintegrate my sidewander once we get up there into space, but shit on me. All right. Um, was there anything else that I wanted to try? Let me just make sure. Same crew? Okay, cool. Um, I don't think thrusters would help much more, but what I do want to kind of do is I want to throw more um, advanced reaction wheels everywhere. Again, it's just one of those things where it's never a bad thing to have more struts, more rockets, and more reaction wheels so that when you are... Um, uh, trying to move the ship that it actually damn well moves. Okay, and then we'll just strut this guy up. Strut him to the sides there. Yeah, this should be good. Okay, let's get another try. And if you don't know by now, the solution, if this doesn't work, will be to add more struts and rockets until we have a rocket that should actually blow up the moon. <laughs> you should see, when I started a new, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, sandbox campaign, first thing I usually do is throw up a few probes and I'll send the probe to the MUN and have it scan the MUN for resources so I can figure out a place that I want to build my MUN base. And, um, you know, you could do that very efficiently and have like a tiny little rocket and all that sort of stuff. But this is about what my probe rockets look like. 
<laughs> it's just this just you know all this stuff all this wonderful beautiful beautiful stuff um, okay so really we're trial and error engineering here but let's see what um, launch number two does okay and we're gonna go in five I'm gonna just crank it to 100 because we need all the thrust we can get all right ready to count it down five four three two one lift off <laughs> Now, again, it's flying really smooth at first. That's probably a result of these lovely struts that just hold everything together. The problem is it is leaning a little bit to one side. I can just try and even it out. Yeah, see, it seems to be wanting to lean down like that. Um, that's not good. So like immediately it wants to turn itself around. Um, this is not good. <laughs> this is not the way we're supposed to go, people! Um, but as the fuel kind of drains, it sort of seems to recover. So there's some sort of weird imbalance there that we got to figure out. I have a feeling that it's like something in the Sidewinder here might be um, just a little bit off in terms of weight. I mean, let's see if we can land this. Gusters. And look at these guys in the bottom, and I just... Oh, you probably can't see them in the damn bottom, but um, let's see if I can go inside the ship. Here's your ship interiors, by the way. Uh, nope. Can't see the other Kerbal from that seat. Like, I wish... Hold on, I could move... Um, I should really move that up here. Screw it. Yeah, that'll, that'll work for now. Um, so that you can see their beautiful little scared faces. I'm try to just land this. Just shut all that weight. We hit the water. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't think we. I don't think we survived. <laughs> it was. There was an attempt. Uh, okay. And that really killed my frame rate. Oh my god. It might be a little head heavy, but um, there's nothing I can really do about that. Uh, like that's just how it has to be. Um, the only thing I'm thinking is maybe to lower the sidewinder a little bit. Um, but yeah, like my my thought is maybe like some of this stuff is just a little bit off. Um, and is there a way to kind of balance it, right? And it seemed like hold on, let's just do another test for science. I want to see if I can get if I can get like dead on. And actually, let's, uh, we'll immediately stage the second stage. Get rid of those boosters. Let them do their own thing. So it's falling this way. Okay. I mean, getting rid of those boosters still doesn't solve the problem, but... Okay. Gives me an idea. Eject, eject. I know. What's the rebuy of Kerbal like, right? Like, <laughs> this has got to be more expensive than the Sidewinder. Okay, so I have two thoughts. One would be, um, it seems to fall this way, so I could just add some weight to the top of the Sidewinder. Um, let me just try deconnecting this, and what you'll see is the whole assembly just comes off. Um, I wonder if there is like a, like there used to be a tool that could show you the balance of it. Um, d oh, no, I don't want to go to the... Oh no! Uh, hold on. I lost my craft. The switch hanger is with uh, this stuff off. Okay, so let's just move that off. So again, if we are falling this way, then maybe what we could do is just add some weight on the top. So what if I took a very small... Like, this is the <laughs> cobbled together... Um, engineering that you should probably avoid, but... Um, okay. Let me just see... Okay. I'm gonna just move that in a little bit so it doesn't stick out that much. That could help. 
Um, now the other thing I was thinking about doing was, and I don't know if this is even gonna be possible, because it does have fairings. This is pretty cool, where you can um, place, for example, a fairing here, and then try to uh, literally uh, envelop your entire ship in a protective aerodynamic cloth. Oh my god, this actually might work. Or will it? See, that's the other thing, is it doesn't seem to be centered. Uh, okay, hold on. It's also not letting me get out of this. Get out of here. Why are you attached that way? Okay, please tell me that's not how it was flying. So you can see here, yeah, I think the problem is that we're a little bit off center. And so if we can just maybe even take this and tweak that just this dusty. I think that's a little more in line. And then would a fairing be possible? This is something that I'm very interested in, in seeing here. <laughs> this is the craziest looking rocket in the world, but okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that will make it more aerodynamic, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so adding more drag to the bottom, that, that would be another thing to look at. I mean, let me just see how this works, because I think it was just off-center. And maybe by adding that little bit of weight and then rebalancing it might just pay off. Um, well, you think about it, this is how they would have had to get Sidewinders into space before there was, um, you know, uh, atmospheric flight, right? Before Horizons. Um, or they would have just built everything in space. Now, again, sort of that is like, you know, a good point is that, you know, building stuff on Earth and then getting that into, into space, that is expensive. That uses a lot of fuel. It's better to get the, you know, it's easier to get the materials up into space and then build from there or to mine them, you know, go on the moon and mine the materials there and build the rocket ship in zero G. Um, of course, you'd kind of need to have a, um, you know, a facility to do all that up there. So, okay, there we have it. Um, Jeff Bezos, your penis is so small compared to mine. Look at my space penis. <laughs> this is insane. Okay, um, let's see what happens. Launching! I didn't even give a countdown that time. It's just like, okay. Please upload this monstrosity. Well, if it works, I will. I don't know, where do you upload these things to? I was trying to find, um, some people have already built elite ships in Kerbal, and I was trying to find them, and there was one, but I was like, you know what, this looks so crappy, I could just build this myself. So I did. <laughs> While we're in mid-flight, by the way, this seems to be working beautifully. Um, it looks like those were the adjustments that we needed. I'm going to lower the speed a little bit. By doing this, like, um, it will allow me to detect problems a little bit quicker. And also, I won't, um, I'll have more fuel for once I get up there. Now, normally, if this was a normal rocket around this time, I would start to move a little bit towards the, um, uh, the 270 mark. I'd sort of move a little bit to the right here. But... Given the size of this thing, I really want to get, get these um, Clydesdale solid fuel boosters done. You can see, that we're hitting the upper atmosphere. We, I, I tell you, this is this is gonna work. It's just gonna require a little bit of like creative engineering, right? I think that fairing really, really helps with the aerodynamicness of it because all the parts inside each have their own drag, right? Once you put this thing over there, I think it just like simplifies your rocket. Uh, you can always see we are starting to drift. Um, the wrong way. So I'm going to start tw tw twilting a little. Okay, here we go. First stage complete. Drop those boosters. Thrust 100%. Begin tweaking. Okay. We're in a little bit of a spin, but that's okay. We just need to now start working on our horizontal thrust without completely screwing ourselves. Um, if we could just stop that spin, that would be great. I think I am going the wrong way. I think normally you're supposed to go to 90. Might be going against the purple 
Yeah, I think I went the wrong way. Oh my god, okay, um... Alright, well there we go. There goes all of our uh, fuel from those stages, but that's fine. We'll get rid of those. Uh, get rid of those side rockets, side bays. And let's let's unveil the Sidewinder. Whoa, <laughs> she's a space baby! Yeah. Okay, so the question is, like, do we have enough Delta V to get to the Mun at this point? I don't think so. I was kind of hoping to have a few... a little bit more of those rockets. But here's the crazy part, is we did not turn early, so our apoapsis is quite high at 1.3 million. Usually you just need about, you know, 100,000 is good, but really 70,000, I think, is the, the lowest orbit you can have. Um, what we will do is, when we get to the end, we're going to set a maneuver node to put ourselves into a stable orbit. Don't need to go that crazy with it, though. Um, and that'll be about 877 milliseconds of thrust. Uh, you'll have to start thrusting for... Your burn time's about two minutes, almost. And uh, the node is in 25 minutes. My thing is, like, mm, we don't have that much fuel. But, let's see. So I'm going to speed up time here. So we get... Uh, let's say about... He oh, shit, we passed the node. Oh, my God, we're screwed. Okay, hold on. Oh, we're not screwed. We just need to punch it. So towards that little blue nubbin, that is going to put us into a nice little orbit. Sidewinder with, you know, booster tail. But uh, let's see. Okay. So as you can see, um, orbit is really just falling sideways in a circle. Um, right now we, we have a sort of up and then down really quickly. And we would come in... Ironically, very close to the space center, which leads me to believe that, yeah, we did go in the wrong... I think we went in the wrong direction. Uh, <laughs> so we would fall back where we started. <clears throat> but as you can see, because we are kind of pushing in this direction, our orbit is expanding and is growing. Uh, and that's what we want to see. We want to see that number grow. Um, electric charge, apparently we don't have to worry about it because we brought along 400,000 watts of electric charge. We probably don't even need solar panels enough power to last us until, um, uh, you know, in a time. Uh, but, again, what we're doing here is just, you know, trying to, uh, because we missed the maneuver, our apoapsis is not going to be exactly there, but honestly, again, we're really far out from the planet. I don't really, I can even point it further down this way, and that will be kind of pointing like, like, where are we here? We're, like, here? So, so we'd be kind of like pointing almost like instead of like in a, in a straight line and trying to increase our vertical, we're almost like pointing there and uh, increasing our speed as well as our horizontal. Now let's say our periops gets to about 100k and that's fine. We can, we can live with that. So problem here is we are about half a tank of fuel, but we're usually a lot, um, we might have solved a lot of the Delta V problems, we'll see. Um, what we want to do is we want to target the Mun. As you can see, Kerbin also has a second Mun called Minmus, but... Eh, I want to get out there. I'm going to create another maneuver here and increase our Apoapsis. Let's see. Okay, so we have an encounter with the Mun. And we can get it to... very close to the... The PE stands for Periapsis which is the lowest point of your orbit, your, um, your apoapsis and your periapsis. So we can get a periapsis that's about 200,000. What we would be doing here would be like essentially burning uh, to the point where we're, our, we're going far out beyond the moon's apsis, apoapsis, slowing ourselves down essentially, and then encountering the moon on the way back. Now, if we wanted to do that maneuver a little bit later, it's fine, whatever, I think that's good. Uh, now again, we're about uh, two hours from the node, and the burn will take about 51 seconds. I think we could do this, so... My problem is, can we slow down once we get to the Mun? Um, yeah, see, we're rotating the wrong way. I put the wrong... <laughs> you went... You were supposed to turn right, and you went left, you fool. Uh, and that's probably going to eat up a lot of our Delta V. So if we do have to ultimately restart this, that's fine, because... Um, we have massively screwed this one up, so that means a second. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, let's start the burn. And let's just watch what it does to our orbit. As you see, our apoapsis is growing. Periops as well. 
we're gonna get this side wonder to the moon. As to whether we land or not, though, I don't know, guys. Uh, I have a feeling we're gonna get there. We're gonna have just enough moon um, uh, uh, fuel to make a stable orbit, and then we're gonna get screwed. But I have a, a backup plan where we'll build. You know, if, if that happens, we can build another craft, go and dock with the side wonder to refuel it, um, and possibly even give it another booster engine um, if we need. It'll be a lot easier to launch a craft that isn't a super clunky Mach 1 or Mach 0 0.5 side wonder. Uh, as you can see here, again, we're getting pretty close to Mun Encounter. Just gonna burn, 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 burn. Okay, so that's gonna give us a periops of. You can see it just shrinking there. I wanna bring it like under 200k. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. All right, let's complete that. So, where's our vessel? Our vessel's right here. Our path, what the fuck? Uh, oh, okay, so yeah, our path, usually you go this way, right? This is what I'm saying, like we're in the wrong direction. So our path is going this way. Uh, we will loop around, we will hit the moon. If we do nothing, then it will send us back to um, Kerbin and we will splatter there in the mountains. We do not want this to happen, obviously. But um, one thing that we do want to keep it normally, if we didn't have this much freaking electric charge, um, you'd be worried at this stage about um, unveiling your solar panels. If you had um, the ones that were folded up, you know, at this point we could give the sidewinder a little happy, um, <laughs> this is a little very happy sidewinder um, with like a baboon penis. Uh, we'll just keep that retracted. For the, for the look and the aesthetic of it. Um, when we get to the mine, we will be able to ditch our um, booster rocket here, but for now we're gonna need that little attachment, but what a beautiful ship. Um, in fact, we can even do an EBA, and uh oh hold on. Okay, I see a slight problem here. <laughs> <It's> that... <laughs> How do you get out of here? Um, okay, we're actually not gonna do an EBA because our pilot will never be able to get back in the ship. Hmm. I mean, technically speaking, you can get in through this crew compartment, but um, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna risk that. Okay, so let's accelerate time. I can't believe I went backwards. Like I wasted so much fuel fighting against the, the orbit of the planet. I didn't even realize at the time. Okay, so we're gonna just tease it forward. And you'll see that once we get within the moon's gravitational sphere, yes, here we go. That's what we're looking for, is um, our next plotting our next maneuver. And we're just going to slow the ship down. That's all you really need to do once you get here. Unfortunately, you can see that, oh my god, yeah, I don't know. We may have to restart this from the beginning. But there we go. There would be a stable orbit. 600 milliseconds. Um... And right now my delta V is like 75 milliseconds in this stage. Like I'm almost out of fuel, and the rest is really going to rely on like my sidey engines. And let's just say that makes me nervous. And also, oh my god, I thought the game just crashed. It came very close to almost crashing here, actually. Okay, so we're going to get into position, mark ourselves off with the node, and then begin accelerating time. So we get within the few seconds, of, oh, we've just passed the periops. Okay, burn quickly, burn quickly, my friend. Um, and what you'll see here is we're gonna run out of fuel. And here we go, this is the true test. Do the Sidewinder engines work? Oh my God, here we go, Sidewinder away. And not bad, it is, uh, yeah, okay. This is working. Here you go, we have a Sidewinder in orbit of the Mun people. Now, of course, we could just say, oh, sorry, the one's permit locked. You can't get down there and, and end it here, but I want to get down there. I want to see what's what's on the month. I want to see, oh, oh no, catastrophic failure. What happened? What happened? What did we lose? I mean, probably something in here. So maybe those engines are kind of blowing shit up. Um, seems to be working fine though. I mean, Whatever blew up, it probably wasn't important because our ship still functions. <laughs> and we still have our docking clamp excellent. Okay. If that blew up, we'd be kind of screwed. Um, but it didn't. Ah! 
Um, okay. So that was... What was that? Was that important? Uh, mono propellant and uh, fuel. You can see all of our debris. <laughs> We're just like leaving glitter in space. Hmm, so these engines are kind of like probably heating up. Uh, stuff that should be heating up. Yeah, like I think, yeah, this one just blew up all the stuff there, but that's fine. That's okay. So we have done it. We have got a Sidewinder into orbit of the moon. I'm very proud of myself right now. Uh, it is a stable orbit. But the problem I'm seeing is that we just don't have enough fuel. We're going to need to do something about that. We're going to need to send a fuel rod, essentially. We're going to have to build and design and send a fuel rod. Um, but look at these people. It's a Sidewinder. I wonder, can you blow this up? No. Okay. Maybe it's just cosmetic, uh, cosmetic enhancement. Um, but yeah, I think this, this is like... I didn't even know if we would get this far. And I'm very happy that we got a lovely Sidewinder in Elite Dangus um, into KSP. But I think what we want to do... And, and by the way, let's just look at here. So we've... we've Got plenty of food, monopropellant is good, liquid fuel and oxidizer, we need more of that. Oxygen, we're good, we've only used a fraction. Water, probably could use more. And as you can see, carbon dioxide, waste water, and waste will start filling up. And they actually fill up relatively quickly. It's kind of, um, it's kind of a lot, right? Um, but okay, so I think what I'd like to do is take a bio break and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we will go back to the space center. We're going to build a fuel rat and we're going to send it up to rendezvous with our side monitor to refuel it and maybe even um, leave behind a little booster rocket. And then we'll see if we can land the side monitor. And I guarantee you we won't be able to land the side monitor. It's going to blow up, but that could be fun too. I'm just going to save the game. Sidey in Mun space. Okay. So, bear with me, I'm going to take a, you know, five minute bio break or so, I'll throw up the, the bathroom screen, and then when we get back, um, uh oh, program not responding. I tried to save it, and, uh, oh, thank god, okay, okay, and I'm froze. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, I'll, I'll be right back, and then we'll continue this, um, absolutely insane adventure. <laughs> See you guys in a second.
We're back. <coughs> Excuse me. I nearly choked on my own uh, uh, water there. Um, look at that. We have a Sidewinder in space, people. This is this is uh, the goal of Kerbal Space Program is just to do what you want. <laughs> and we wanted to go to space with a Sidewinder, and we did. We managed to get past the horrible atmosphere of uh, Kerbin over there. And uh, then I look pretty in front of the bun. I mean, probably could use a paint job, but I am somewhat satisfied with this design. I'm just going to turn the music up a little bit. Um, do let me know if the audio mix is uh, uh, not working out. I've got to put the desktop audio back on, don't I? Of course I do. Of course. That's probably why the mix cuts going out, because I have to play with these little sliders that don't have numbers on them. But, okay, so what do we need to do here? Um, step one, we need to go back to the Space Center. We need to build a fuel rat ship to come and dock with our Sidewinder and to actually, and I've never, I haven't done space docking in years, so that's going to be a gong show in and of itself. Uh, so we need to get a craft that's capable of getting up here, rendezvousing with the Sidewinder, uh, refueling the Sidewinder, maybe even... Um, I'm trying to think, like, if I put... Because this cargo hatch does not look perfectly aligned. I probably should have moved that down a little bit. But it is aligned with the uh, internals of the ship. And I'm not sure how much weight, say, these panels have, as an example. But, um, okay. I think, I, think, I think we're good. Okay, so back to the space center. Phase one has been completed. Phase, phase two must commence now. And it's going to take a little bit of RAM to get there, but that's okay. We got a beast computer now. Mm. For those who have not played Kerbal Space Program, this is a real fun game to uh, muck around in. I highly, highly recommend it. So, okay, so how are we going to approach this fuel rat vessel? Well, we're not going to do anything crazy on this. We're going to want something that is just simple and works. Um, no crazy Sidewinder <laughs> Elite Replica designs. But uh, just pure functionality and, and form and function, right? Um, so yeah, <laughs> the lovely fairings. So we're going to create a new vessel. Again, we're going to start with uh, a remote guidance unit, even if it is a manned vessel. It's always good to have these just in case. Just in case your crew dies of starvation, you can still bring their body home. Um, and that's the second question is, do we want to bring, like, do we want to put, like, a little lander can... Um, I kind of have an idea here. I kind of want to create like a little, a little lander um, that we can leave docked to the back of the sidewinder as essentially an escape route. Um, though, I, yeah, it's gonna, it's more likely going to just blow up, but um, it's gonna be fun. So I don't care. Um, okay, so we put a decoupler there because we're gonna um, decouple this whole uh, section. Uh, what it's going to need on the top is going to be a docking port to align with our um, other vessel. And we're going to throw just some baby landing gear on this, maybe a 4x4. Four four. My thought is that if, um, <laughs> if the Sidewinder doesn't survive, maybe this thing will. Uh, it's a it's a gamble, but okay. Uh, let's move that up a little bit, and we're going to want to at least put um, maybe monopropellant engines on this. So we'll just slap um, some RCS fuel on the top, and from the side of it, there are um, these guys, which are monopropellant fuel engines. Um, if I slap them there, you can see. Thrust to rate ratio is three, but the delta V is only six six hundred. That might be just enough for this to get back to orbit, but not enough for it to get back home. I mean, maybe, but it's really not the purpose of this vessel. The purpose of this vessel is to dock and refuel. So um, we are going to want to make sure that we do have a couple reaction wheels just for kicks. And uh, let's see here. We'll probably go with a fuel tank yeah, about yay big, but then we'll throw not these guys, or maybe we can just tweak scale them down. 
there we go. And we're going to put fuel lines into the main tank that way. Um, and actually what we should do really is put decouplers there. Don't need the big ones for these. Um, that way when these tanks are dry we can just get rid of them. And those tanks will probably give us the fuel that we need to get um, to the Mun orbit. Uh, oh, okay, so that's sort of weird. Oh, yeah, right, because these are the only engines on there. So that's how it should work, yeah. Though, weirdly enough, it's like telling me there's no Delta V, and that's probably because our... Um, where is it? Yeah, our remote guidance unit is actually, like, a different vessel, right? So um, this is all, like, kind of considered a different vessel. That's fine. Okay, so... Um, what we're probably going to want is this liquid poodle engine. This is, um, you know, uh, it's got good thr thrust to weight, but look at our delta V, 5,000, right? Like, you could you could take this thing to, to Jupiter and back, no problem. And we'll throw a couple nose cones on the tops of these guys. Maybe tweak scale them down just a tiny bit. That's looking good. And we don't really need, um, we don't really, like, these are just support tanks, so we don't really need anything under them. So this is your basic fuel rad design. Now, what are we missing? Energy, electrical. And without this, we will die. So uh, we're going to put those just here. And, of course, um, we're going to need solar panels as well. And I'll actually put two sets of solar panels. These are the ones that actually unfold, so you can see they would extend thusly. Okay, and that's pretty much all we would need. Um, you know, if we were doing some real science and stuff like that, you'd want to attach your scientific instruments and whatnot. Um, I wonder if they have, there was one mod that added, I'm not sure if this was a mod, it's probably not in the main game, but there was like a mod that would add um, a seismometer and you would smash your probes into the moon and it would get, you know, seismic readings from it, which is pretty cool, actually. Um, and hold on. I realize I've got my stuff on, like, top chat instead of live chat, so I might be missing some messages. If I have missed your messages because YouTube decided you weren't important, then uh, please write to YouTube. <laughs> I'm sorry, though. Um, okay, so I think that's good um, in terms of our core craft. Like, again, it's like I could put some more life support up there, but we, we don't really need it. I mean, we did lose some of our uh, tanks in the, the quote-unquote accident, but meh. All right, and uh, we will give it a nice big long fuel tank. Scale that down. Let's maybe add, do we need another one? Yeah, we'll do another one. Or actually, I just want to do like a half one. Bloop. Let's smallitize it. Um, okay, and so for this one, again, I would probably go with the skipper. Because uh, this will be kind of like the, the main engine to think about once we're out of the atmosphere. Uh, thrust to weight ratio is still above one, so that's good. And plenty of Delta V. Like, this is enough Delta V to get to Joule um, if we can get this sucker to orbit. Now, how do we get it to orbit? Well, as usual, more struts, more rockets. Uh, so, uh, I think we can do something relatively simple here and just, like... Hmm. I want to actually offset these from these guys because I don't want these turkeys interfering or getting themselves lopped off. And we'll probably go with, uh, say, these kickback boosters. What kind of position does this put us in? So, if we just fire the boosters, it's about 1.6 thrust and 1,300. I think you need about, like, 3,000 to get out of Kerbin's atmosphere, so that's not terrible. If we were to um, fire everything, um, kind of cuts it in half. So, I feel like... I feel like... I mean... Because I want to make sure there's fuel left over, right? So I want to make sure that these aren't hogging all the fuel. So my thought is, okay, maybe what we can do here is just, again, put another set of decouplers here. Throw on some additional fuel tanks. 
Um, and then put a fuel line uh, going from their insides to the main thrust. And these would probably need to be on their own stage. So I'm not sure when they would um, necessarily fall out, but we're gonna put another one just below that. Right. Nope. There. Okay, we don't need the second fuel lines. And what does this do for us? It gives us just enough delta V to get there, I think. Well, there's only one way to find out, really. Um, so let's cap these all off, make it nice and aerodynamic. But that's a nice, compact, cool rocket design. It's nothing uh, crazy. But what it's lacking is struts. Tons and tons and tons of struts. So let us do this. Strut the bottom, strut the top. Yeah, like thus. Struts to here, struts to here. And those things are gonna fall off, so we'll do a middle strut to the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, looking good. Let's strut you guys to the body. I uh, like thusly. Very good. Okay. Now, again, for aerodynamics, what we could do is just like we did with the last one, is we can throw on a protective shell. Won't have to go as crazy for this one. It's a very odd stubby penis, but it's fine. And there you go. We've got our little uh, fuel rat. So let's call this the fuel rat. Okay. Um, so then the question is, do we want to bring someone up to join our lovely scientists up there? Or do we keep that automated and then this is like the escape mechanism? Because I don't feel like they can get out of the craft anyway, so yeah. Oh, here's Gustus again. Okay. I thought Gustus and Neiman were already up there. But how about Megmun? Megmun, I think, is the one we have to send on this doomed mission. Okay. So the last thing we will want to do is probably add ourselves some lovely landing clamps. Just to make sure the vessel's not um, sitting on the ground. Um, I think that's good. I mean, could add another set of rockets there, but... I want to see how this does, and then we'll see if we need to do that. All right, let's launch. My rockets look really weird somehow. Well, I do kind of use alternative design tactics. I haven't played this in a really long time, too, but it's not, you know, like, the crazy thing is it's not that important where, um, how you build your rockets as long as they fly. It doesn't matter what they look like. I mean, if, if, if I had more time and I was trying to do this specifically for aesthetics then you know I'd try to make them look a little prettier but I'm building a real quick quickie to get up there and and um, refuel a sidewinder so you know I'm not gonna worry too much about how it looks just how it performs so first thing is again turn on your SAS and this time we'll go the right direction 90 degrees I think our last one got turned around just saw a little complication here is um, we'll want these to uncouple as our rockets fire all right so we're gonna start Probably around, yeah, given about 75% thrust, because I think those boosters will do quite fine. That'll help us conserve even just a little bit more, a little bit less, like 50%. Okay, five. We're gonna launch the music. Five, four, three, two, one. No, I'm gonna wait for the music. Five, four, three, two, one, and go, and. There we go. I hope you can hear the music because it's like dope. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. That's some dope Tokoso right there. <laughs> Fly! Okay, going to take the music down a little bit. Um, that's a great idea. Make a space to orbit uh, eagle next time. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I'm not very good at the SSTO designs anyway, because they're 
Like when it comes to the flight mechanics in this in this game, I am not that amazing. Um, I prefer just like giant rocket, shoot it up, get out of this crappy atmosphere, and then <laughs> once you're in orbit, everything kind of just works better. But SSTOs, you know, you have to spend a lot of time in the atmosphere. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. Okay, so get ready for decoupling. And but by oh, those were the wrong things. I decoupled the wrong things. Okay, well, um, there goes all that excess fuel. I hope we have enough. So you can see right now our surface speed is just barely increasing. Like this engine may not be uh, that great when it's in atmosphere, but once you get into space, it's a little bit better. Um, we are going to start angling right now um, towards the proper way of 90 degrees. Um, as you can see, that does impact our speed, um, but we will just start climbing again. Okay. I'm thinking though I might need to um, hold on a second. That needs to be up there. Yeah, I might need to go back to the drawing board on this one and just at least fix that coupling. As I can't believe I just ditched all my fuel and then I went, oops, wrong, wrong thing. Uh, now as you can see, uh, this is more of a standard orbit than the previous one we did. We really just want to get this to about a hundred. And from there, then you pretty much want to dump uh, all your energy and all your thrust into, into vertical, which is like thus. And you can see that fuel is ticking away quite rapidly. Um, and hold on a second. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Um, that's okay. The staging is all messed up on this chip, which would really throw off my delta V calculations as if there were any calculations. So really, you want to be, um, I think it's like, what, like 2,000 or so? Uh, you can see all the couplings and fairings. It's a bit dark on this side of the planet, but it's fine. Um, in terms of delta V right now, that's not really a lot. But that's only, like, these tanks are the ones that are draining, right? And once they drain, I get rid of them, this tank will be full. So the question is, can I get to a stable orbit? Mm, I kind of feel like I'm going to save a lot of time just by going back and redoing a couple things. Okay, actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to revert back to the VAB. So, yeah, I think that was a little hasty to um, throw that build into action before I'd really worked out some of these things. Okay, so first of all, the boosters go first then the fuel this stuff does not happen until there and this would fire with this and that would be with those okay um even i want to separate those because i don't necessarily want those engines going off and i like to do this on its own okay so that right off the bat will be a little better and you can see there the delta v is it's okay, but I kind of feel like, yeah, okay, so maybe these do need some reliance. And those can fire with everything else. Um, I mean, that should be okay. I mean, really the problem was we ditched that extra fuel. Hey, what's up, Nico? How you doing? Um... The other thing I could do is just do this. <laughs> more boosters, more struts. That's what we want. Yeah, fuck it. Just don't do it off center. Just for the love of Pete, don't screw it up. That should be fine. Um, double your thrust. That's all you need to do, people. Just add more of everything. We will, of course, add some struts. That way it's not flopping all over the place. Um, yeah, I think we're okay. Now that should do it. That should do it, yeah. We should be okay now. Okay, and we fixed our staging. And that was the, that was the main problem, is we were just getting rid of fuel tanks that really could have helped us. I think those extra engines will also add a little oomph. Almost like liquid fuel boosters.
Because, yeah, I'm also like, I don't want to stream forever, and, uh... I do want to try at least one landing of the Sidewinder on the moon, though I'm telling you people, it's not gonna- it's not gonna survive. Not in a million years. That's okay, it doesn't have to. It just needs to touch the surface. Will be one of those, um, crashed POI signal sources for others to find decades later. So here we go. This kind of looks like, um, you know, it looks like, it looks like, like a squid, um, like a squid with his arms all together. Uh, okay, so let's activate our, um, SAS. Let's ramp our throttle up to about 50%. And five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! And that is a nice smooth launch. We could be going faster, but, um... You can see up here too, there's your atmosphere bar, and light blue, heavy atmosphere, and it gets thinner as it goes up, and once you get here, you have no drag, and that's good. Um, as of right now, if I were to go really, 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 really fast, I'm actually going to encounter the same sort of um, uh, deadly fire that you would encounter when you're re-entering, right? Because you're pushing hard against the atmosphere, that creates friction. You can see there, like, the aerodynamicness of the craft, that's all the wind or atmosphere falling off the craft. It's very windy right, right here in Kerbal Space Program. Just make sure these are the right damn ones this time. Yeah, they are, okay. So yeah, you can see we are starting to heat up, so we're gonna drive our throttle down a little bit. Just at least until these liquid fool, <laughs> liquid fools, yeah. Until these liquid fool boosters, okay, here we go, and drop, dump them, and go. Oh, bye boosters. They're falling right back down on the space center. That's gonna hurt someone. Oh well. And we will start, uh, we are at about 40,000 feet already, so we've done quite a lot of that. So we can actually go almost fully uh, horizontal at this point. Start working on gaining that horizontal speed, because as you'll see, our, our apoapsis is just... Actually, you know what, we could even just kinda cut the engines and chill, but let me just get it a little bit higher. I really just, you know, what you want to see is that. The uh, circle, the thing turning into a golden arch, you know? McCurbles. So, I think, yeah, I think now is a good time to just cut the thrust. We'll time accelerate to closer to the apoapsis. We're about a minute away. Okay, cool. We're going to point completely horizontal, so we're not gaining um, much more. And we will just fire away and watch our orbital speed increase. And this is great, because we haven't even dumped our reserve tanks, right? We'll pop back onto our map here. And we'll watch those. Um... So these are much more powerful thrusters. You can see even, I haven't strutted these enough, because they are kind of like splaying out. This is like the squid now swimming. Okay, get rid of them. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Oh, that was pretty. Nice and symmetrical. So beautiful. Um, and there we go. Um, now let's just pop back out here. Let's see how our orbit's looking. Um, Apoapsis is about 219. We need our orbital speed at least above like 2000. So let's just see how this goes. I like how you're pretending to know what you're doing. The signs of a great leader. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've no idea. I could talk. I, I I could pretend to talk about astronomy with a NASA guy, and he'd be like, "How do you know so much?" And I'd be like. Well, you know, the answer is in all those books that I read. Not. It's from Kerbal Space Program. And they'd probably laugh and say, yeah, the, uh, we probably learned all of our NASA stuff from Kerbal Space Program too, because this game is dope. And I'm sure NASA loves it, because how many games are like this that actually delve into orbital mechanics, right? So I just dumped our last stage. Bye-bye. Fuel rat debris clogging up the atmosphere. And we've got our nice little stubby liquid poodle. And this is a very efficient engine, so burn times are longer, but as you can see, we are in a stable orbit. That is lovely. Okay. Step two, get to the MUN. So, um, because we've launched properly this time, the MUN will be orbiting in this direction. Um, really, we're probably going to want to almost do an orbit around Kerbin and come back and catch it on the flip side. So you can see there are those little tiny ribbons there show an encounter. Ideally what you want is, you know, an encounter where your periaps is... Okay, there we go. 100 kilometers above the men. That's good. We'll go with that. Uh, we're going to have to do one orbit. 
and it'll take about a minute to burn. So we need to, what you want to do is like wherever your node is, you want to um, kind of start burning about halfway there so that half of your burn happens before the node, half of the burn happens after. So burn time of a minute 25 means you want to be around, I guess, what, 45 seconds um, before the node is when you want to sort of stop. So I'm going to set it up. I'm going to do a good time lapse. My game is frozen because it's probably taken so many resources to figure all this out. Uh, okay, and we're gonna just fast travel a little bit faster and okay, we're getting a little dangerous with that fast travel. Three, two, one, and there we go. We're about 45 seconds away from the node and start burning. Start the burn. Feel the burn. All right, and as you can see, our periaps, which is the lowest point of the orbit, um, which is right behind us, is gonna kind of catch up to us because our apoaps is growing. And that is gonna grow until it gets to about there and that will give us was an encounter uh, with the mun. So now you just gotta sit and wait patiently while things burn away. It's also a good time to check and make sure that you have electric charge. As you can see, my engines, when they're on, will actually charge the uh, thing. But actually, it's a good time to maybe say, let's ditch this uh, scaffolding. And let us open up every second panel that are not in front of engines. And we'll at least get some solar power going. Well, I'm trying to keep my eye on the node to make sure we don't overshoot our destination. With an app, with with a with a with a mun periapsis of 95, if I keep burning too much past the um, point, either we're gonna zip past the moon or right into it. But you can see here, there's about 190 thrust points left to go. <laughs> thrust points. See, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, and as we approach, we might want to start slowing down a little bit just so that we don't overshoot. Uh, about 40 left to go, 35, 25. We're gonna just stop and then nuzzle forward. Okay, so our Mun Periops there is... Uh, which one is it? Oh, I think this is weird where like, okay, I think my orbit goes like here and then back here and then around again. And there's actually two encounters with the Mun. That's why I'm seeing like two periapses. Um, I have a feeling that this is the one. Okay, well, let's, let's just see what happens. I think we're good now. And by the way, let's just check on these. Uh, you can see these are already empty, so... At this point, these extra canisters are dead weight. We're just gonna get rid of them in three, two, one, poof. Bye-bye. And now we've got our, our core uh, fuel wrap vessel. We can also extend these other solar panels. Might as well, just in case, just in case a couple of them break off. There we go, we got lots of power, power for days. It's very pretty um, sort of uh, star vessel. Yay, okay. And then we'll go back to orbital view and let us do some time acceleration. And let's see where we end up. So you can see we're kind of chasing the mun here. Ooh, I have a bad feeling about this, that maybe the mun encounter won't happen until the second orbit or something. Because that's really weird. Or no, I guess in this little branch where it's faster than the mun, it's going to allow the mun to catch up. Yeah, I think we're going to have this periaps quite far on the other side. Hmm. So we'll probably want to do one quick burn to adjust our periops. Oh, by the way, look at the sidewinder. <laughs> it looks like a, it's 747 on the radar. Okay, so we probably want to actually bring our periops closer. And you can see also our sidewinder is on a very weird angle that we're going to have to... Like, we can even do this now. Set that as the target, and it'll give you the ascending node. But that's past our periops. We don't want to be doing too much at once. So we're going to just bring that in a little bit. Um, I think that's as good as anything, really. Okay. So it's about 39 minutes to our node. We'll do some time acceleration to get there. Oh, we're past our node, but that's fine. This, this one's kind of a sloppy node. It doesn't really matter. As you can see, our 
we're just basically burning um, in the opposite direction of how we're traveling, trying to slow ourselves down to allow the moon to capture us better. And right about there. That's fine. Uh, now we can get rid of that maneuver, and we'll want to add um, there. Okay. And we're going to try to align that, that uh, descending node there so that we're kind of kind of close because we're going to do another burn there but right now it only we're only going to need to spend 125 in fuel and oh my god sorry my thing almost froze again uh we're only have to spend 125 milliseconds of delta v in order to bring ourselves into a stable orbit which is not bad and that's you know when you have a light craft that isn't stupid and clunky like a sidewinder then that works much better it's only gonna be a 10 second burn as well so we can do it like right at the node of course, you don't want to overshoot the node too much. Yeah, okay, we're here and line it up and ba-boom! Bring us to a stable orbit. We're already good. This is lovely. Okay, drifting a little bit off. Uh, we're just going to do the last few ones as little spurts. Okay, I think that should be good enough. Okay, so, as you can see, um, yeah, here's the problem. Uh, is this guy is on that orbit, going around this way, and we're going around this way, and we need to align up. So, we're going to go to our descending node, and we're going to do a vertical adjustment. And as you can see, uh, you want these kind of intersects to happen. problem is that yeah we need to kind of go a lot further out and what you're seeing here is like there's the target there's where we would intersect it right so in order to get these two nodes closer really what we need to do is slow ourselves down and the way we can do that oh actually sorry so I'm like we're also yeah that's about good now we just need to actually increase or decrease our uh, yeah bring those triangles together as close as you possibly can. And there we go. We will be a separation of 7.3 kilometers. Relative speed 46. So that's fine. Okay. So again, 15 second burn in about 45 minutes. We will want to find our target point. And it's right here. Okay. And let's time warp again. Let's do the time warp again. I am losing electric charge, which is kind of concerning considering all the solar panels I have. Like, I guess they're not. And the other problem, too, is my oxygen is, like, running out. I think my Kerbal's going to die. I didn't put any life support in this thing because I figured, well, I thought it, wasn't, I thought it was just going to be an automated craft, but our guy might die. Okay. Uh, let's just burn, 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 burn. We're way past the note. I screwed that one up, but that's fine. Might actually bring us closer, who knows. Okay, let's just take that maneuver off and let's see how we did. Cannot delete maneuver, control locked. Why you do this? Uh, control locked. Uh oh. What does that mean? Um, it might be because we are not within satellite view of Kerbin. We may have to wait until. We have visibility. Meanwhile, I'm like looking at this oxygen ticking down. And I'm like, mm mm mm. Okay, there we go. There we go. We cleared our node. So, how do we do? Uh, ooh, um, 70 kilometers away. Okay. Well, we can probably fix this the most efficiently at our apoapsis because we'll have the least impact of gravity.
That would give us a separation of 17. Okay. Just want to get these things as close as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect. 11. Okay. I'll go with that. That's fine. <coughs> okay. So one more maneuver. Thankfully, it's also in front of the Mun, because I didn't know that like when I'm behind the Mun, I will not be able to adjust my shit. What just happened? Am I frozen? Yeah, the game is like trying really hard to crash. But it's not doing it, unlike other games. Okay, so we just have like a 0.4 second burn. It's like a tiny, tiny smidgen of a burn. We don't want to do it too, too early. So, five, four, three, two, one. And burn, 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 burn. Just slight little burn. Okay, where does that put us? 11.9, that's fine. Okay, so now um, we're going to accelerate until we get very close to that encounter. Uh-oh, food is running out, water is running out, oxygen is running out. Well, you're going to have to deal with this. Um, like, I'm really hoping that... Okay, so here we are. Now you can see if I go to... Whatchamacallit? Yep. I can see it over there. So, I can burn... I think this is relative to target. So... If I burn off that, am I going to get closer? Yes. Oh, maybe not. Hold on. I really just want to get to... But, well, can I get there faster, though? That's the problem, because, like, I am... I am kind of running out of oxygen now. That's a problem I didn't really think that we would have to deal with. No, that would bring us still to 11.7. So the way that you could do it is, I mean, you could just, like, point your ass at the target. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. I might have just really screwed shit up, but. Is this even. Okay, no, that's right. That's right. Target. Um, yeah, because I think what you're really supposed to do is zero out your speed difference. Again, I have not done this in a really long time. I'm just like, I need to get there as quickly as possible because. Uh, life support is running out, and if I do this behind the Mun, I will not have control of the vessel, because there's no, um, like, there's no, uh, what you call it. So really, like, if I'm just pointing at the target now, yeah, you can see this thing flipping around, and it's like, okay. Why does it keep going? It shouldn't go like separation. No, the separation is too much. Am I pointing at the target? Oh no, I'm not pointing at the target. What happened? Why can't I move? Uh oh. Oh wait, I can move that way. So how come I can't move? Yeah, okay. Target. Move to target. Oh, right. It's the damn pink circles. Um, why can't I make my thrusty thing? Do I have a... For some reason, I just lost my... Oh, because I'm maybe in docking mode? That's why. So, yeah. Sorry. What you want to do is you want to get your yellow circle into the pink circle. So, I wasted a bunch of, a bunch of uh, fuel doing this, but... Okay. So now we can see, okay, so our intercept is getting closer, and it's counting down, and once we get to about, I think, like a kilometer away, that's really where we can say, cool. We can even point a little bit on this side. To, what we want to bring is that yellow circle, which is the direction that we're heading into the pink circle. 
And in theory, once it's within the pig circle, we'll see it getting... Um, the encounter will get closer and closer. I'm sort of fighting my own damn targeting computer, because the targeting thing wants to bring it to the pink circle, but I'm like, no, no, no. Okay, so there we go. One kilometer away. That's going to be fine for now. Now you got to place yourself um, really at your antinode or whatever, right? Your retrograde, retrograde. And we will fire retrograde as we get in closer to the target, right? So you can see here, target is... Oh, I'm crashing again. Hold on. Yeah, because what it's trying to do, like, Kerbal's now having to load the second vessel in the background, right? So... Wait, where did my encounter go? Um... Did I fire in the wrong direction? God damn it! What happened? Okay. I'm just gonna fire at target. We're gonna chase it down. Yeah, target and anti-target. So I don't know if these are stock or if they are part of um, a mod or something, but... Yeah, so I don't know what the hell I did there. But what we want to see is our target intersect. The under a kilometer would be nice. Okay, just bring it in a little bit like that. Yeah, yeah, okay, separation by 0.8, wonderful. Okay, so then we're gonna point anti-target, but we're not gonna thrust. We're gonna let ourselves get closer. Okay, there we go, there we go, okay, so wonderful. Um, so it's not really anti, we just need to fire a retrograde to target. Okay, so there we go. So as you can see, the target is now zipping by, zippy doo dah. bye bye. But we're gonna fire this way, and honestly, this is so inefficient the way we're doing this. By the time we get there, we'll have no fuel. But I'm worried about the oxygen. Poor little uh, Megmon uh, needs to um, eat. Okay, so we look to be centered right at the target, and it says our encounter will be zero. Okay, there we go. We have a direct course. So now we're gonna want to pour uh, go anti-target. And let's let's see let's see how close we get. Okay, let's start firing. You can see the sidewander, it's all its glory. And we want to just zero out our speed to target. We want to have relative the same relative speed. So we're chasing that uh well, why don't we just do this? Retrograde. Yeah. So there it is, the beautiful and luscious Sidewinder. We'll flop over to the Sidewinder. You can see things are going swell here. This is really where we want to um, uh, get. Now, where's that fuel rod? So, if we set this Clampatron as the target and control our ship from here, we're going to want to just point this at our target and line ourselves up for a nice little dock. This is all leading to me just like crashing in the moon, you realize. Like, it's like the irony of, of all the work that goes into this. Okay, that should be good. Just stabilize. Okay, cool. And now we can just wait for you to chill the fuck out and stop. Okay, there we go. And let's flop back here. So, now, we're also going to want to control this from our Clampotron. And in terms of our Sidewinder, we are going to want to... Can we set... A target of that Dacotron. It's just a little bit too far for us. It's weird because I could do it on the other way. It's just a little bit too far. Okay, so that's fine. We're just going to very gingerly, very gently thrust forward. And that's about it. Just three kilometers. Oh god. Um, I just realized we have to go. There's no way we can slow down except by pointing retrograde, retrograde. Okay. And are we close enough to be able to select this yet? No. Okay. Now there is some sort of like docking mode, but I'm like, 
I have no idea. Uh, what are you saying there, Fowler? Uh, Buzz Aldrin did his disser or dissertation on Orbital Rendezvous. I wonder if he plays KSP. I don't know if he's like the video game type, but that would be super cool. So I might have a slight problem here. I think that my vessel just locked itself again. Oh, because I entered docking mode. See, this is why I don't use docking mode, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and we're still not close enough to select that, so we're just going to have to hope that um, this aligns. I mean, we could swap into our sidewind at the last minute, but um, things are about to get messy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we want this thing, which I can't... Uh-oh, frozen again. Uh, wait for program to respond. It just needs time. Okay, here we go. Um, I, I don't have RCS on this thing. That's the problem. Okay, switching to Sidewinder. Control from here. Target this. No, it's already set. Okay. Um, RCS on. Can we just, like... I forget what the RCS controls are. Um, uh, just try and line it up as best as possible. They are somewhat magnetic, so maybe... Okay, we had to boop. We had boopage. Uh, of course, the problem here is I don't know... how you adjust your damn SRVs. But okay, you align to target. Now you... Um, just do the best you can. And, um, and go just forward a little bit. Let's see, can we get those suckers to kiss? Come on, kiss. Oh, you did kiss, but... Um, it's kind of like, this is how we dock, okay? <laughs> oh, hold on! They are magnetized. Oh, we have docking! We have space docking, ladies and gentlemen! The Sidewinder has landed! Now we can turn off that RCS so we don't waste our mono propellant. And look at that, just in the nick of time to save poor uh, Megman, who is running out of food and water. Uh, now at least we have some on this craft. So that's lovely. We, we've done it, people. I'm very... Uh, this is amazing. Um, okay, so... What do we need on... Where is our fuel missing from? We have to kind of go inside the guts of this ship to know. Okay, so that adapter needs fuel. So you have to open up... Oh, no, 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 no. I did not say go. Hold on, how the hell do you do fuel transfers again? Open up this one, and then open up, like, another tank that needs fuel, which would be, like, this puppy. Uh, in, and in. There you go. It's that simple. Sweet! We have docked. We are successfully transferring fuel. As I'm realizing, is we don't have that much fuel to transfer. Um, so, we're going to have to leave the fuel rat in the wilderness to... Um... Oops, no, no, no! Stop that nonsense. Stop using fuel. Um, okay, so hopefully we can at least fill up those two tanks evenly. The music was very fitting for romance, eh? Yeah, like two two docking clamps. Um, basically mating with each other. Oh, wait, hold on. Is there two fuel tanks here? No, that is literally, like, all the fuel that this thing had. That kind of makes me sad. Um, so the problem is, yeah, there's a little bit left, but I'm like, it's going to be hard to evenly distribute that unless the main compartment, uh, no, it does not have anything. Huh, okay. Well, I guess that's about it. So we're going to decouple. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Fuel Rats, for coming to refuel me. And let's see. So we're we're okay. We have seven hundred delta v. That's not enough to land on the mun, my friend. Um, this is going to go badly. But now the sidewinder has a fun little butt plug there, a little lander craft, which um, may be the only thing that survives, to be honest. And we are just going to make sure that he has enough food and oxygen in there for the journey, at least. Um, okay, where are our food containers? Out. 
out. Can we not get oxygen from there? No. Uh, that is wastewater. Yeah, I think the problem is we... Oh, wait, our food... I remember where we put our food. It's inside the damn thing. Okay, hold on. That's not really food that he needs, is it? More the oxygen? I feel like that's the main um, issue. So where do we have oxygen? Here. Okay, so give me oxygen so that we don't die. Ah, it's nice and lovely. Um, are you going to be able to go back to Kerbin? No. <laughs> I don't even think I'm going to be able to get down to the surface. Um, like, my goal at this point is just if one Kerbal survives... I mean, my goal is really already accomplished, was to build a Sidewinder and then to sort of get it to space, right? Um, at this point, if I can land on the moon, it would be a bloody miracle. And if I can just get someone to survive, uh, then cool. And I have a feeling that Megmon with his little escape craft might be the only one um, with that potential. But can you imagine though, if a, sh a Sidewinder in Elite Dangerous had a little ship launch fighter that just attached to the exterior of the Sidewinder, because there's no room for a for an SLF bay, but like imagine you just attached uh, a fighter craft to like the back of it and it would peel off like a little Klingon. But yeah, here's our space Sidewinder and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. It looks exactly like the real thing if you really just use your imagination. Um, but okay, so let me just save. Um, Mun landing, okay. So, we haven't scanned the Mun, so we don't know if there's any, like, we're not really building a base. I was thinking like, if I get into doing more Kerbal, I'll start building a, a Mun base, because that's always, that always was my favorite activity, was building a base piece by piece, shuttling up the next piece, constructing them, docking them together. Um, but in this case, um, what we want to do is we want to be as conservative with fuel as possible and just see if we can land on the moon. Now, I want to land on the light side because on the dark side, we will have no lights. Um, unfortunately, it seems like the dark side is facing Kerbin, and that's where we're getting, you can see that little line there, that's our communication feed. Um, that applies to our, um, like, autopilot, but we do have Kerbals on there that can fly. I don't know, happy they're going to be to fly, but... So I'm adding a maneuver behind um, where I am, and all we really want to do is we want to get down to the surface of the mud. And any place is as good as any. That'll do. So my thought is even like, what about a, like a low atmosphere? Hold on, if I just take that up again until I have a periaps, which would be right about there. That would be a periaps of 15,000 meters above the surface. So maybe instead of like just landing proper, we just get really, really close to it. Um, there is logic in doing this. Okay, hold on. So in two hours, that'll be the node. I mean, should I just move that node up in front of me? Because I'm already very close to my current periaps. Nine thousand. Can we just tweak it a little bit more? Can we make it just like really? Oh no. Six thousand. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Let's do that. I hope there's no hills. Um, <laughs> okay. So in about four minutes, we have to burn for nine seconds. That's fine. We can accelerate our life energy up to say T minus. 10 sec. Okay, there's 15. That's fine. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a sad day for the Kerbins if they lose two. Well, not just two. There's actually three now Kerbals on this ship, thanks to our little docking expedition. What's going on? Hold on a second. Why is this increasing? Oh my god, I'm pointing the wrong way, aren't I? What? No. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What the fuck is going on here. It's because I'm controlling the damn craft from the wrong uh, place. Let's just control from here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally controlling it from that. I, as, as I docked, it kind of screwed things up. Okay. That's fine. 
our sweet, sweet, sweet Sidewinder can, can handle it. My thought is to get the Sidewinder into low orbit, okay? And then to launch off that little probe, place him on the moon, and then, you know, because that, that, that's how they did it with the Apollo 11 mission, right? Is you had um, some guy staying up in moon orbit, and when they blasted off the surface, let's just get that down a little bit. Yeah, okay, about 5,700 meters above the surface. That'll be fun. Um, and why can't I get rid of this? Control locked. Okay. Because I guess I am. Um, see, this is the problem now is like I actually have no direct line of sight to Kerbin. So on the light side, I don't think I can do maneuvers. Like that's, that's not good. But oh well. You can see there's the, the side wander probe. Actually, let me just like, I'll just switch to this for a second just to show you what this is. The hollowed out husk of our, our fuel rat ship. Yeah, I'm going to be cruising over the dark side, but at least the, the positive thing with the dark side is that I can make another maneuver there so that I can adjust my apoapsis on the other side to be closer to the, the um, ground on the light side. Um, but yeah, you can see here, like this thing is still actually operational. It's still got solar power. It's still got, um, like I could even um, just, you know, uh, point this right at the moon and just, um, let's see if I were to do that. No, I think I, what I would want to do is really, yeah, I could crash this thing into the moon. Maybe I might have just enough fuel to do it. Because it is a very efficient engine. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, this is on a doomed trajectory. Okay. We can just get rid of that there. So, my... my hmm. I'm like, on one hand, I'm like... Which vessel should I be at? I feel like I need to be in my, my sidewinder. Otherwise, this is going to go horribly wrong. Michael Collins was in orbit. Yes, he was the one who didn't get to land. It was Buzz and Neil that got to land, and Michael Collins had to sit up in the in the in the rescue ship, right? But kind of an important job if you want to come back from the moon, right? I mean, you don't have to. You could stay there, but you're gonna die. I mean, no one's died on the moon, and that gig is still up for the record books, right? To be the first guy to die on the moon. Not that I think anyone would particularly want to, but. Okay, so let's just like add our maneuver here. So what we're gonna do is just bring our apoapsis, oops, maybe just a little bit down there. So our periaps here would be 2,300 and we would go to 1,300 on the um, on the day side. And as you can see here, that's not good because <laughs> it kind of falls into the planet. So maybe we'll try just shifting it. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. I like this. Okay. Take me to the maneuver computer. It seems to be that we have, um, yeah, we have direct line of sight again. That's wonderful. Now, usually if I'm playing a, a, a Kerbal thing, I'll put a prober on the moon that has a polar or orbit and it will have a relay satellite so that um, everything that you need, um, you'll never lose sight of it because that uh, polar orbit will relay. I was going to say that maybe we can get this crash sorted or get this uh, orbit sorted out. Thank you. And then just go back in time to see the uh, probe or the, the fuel rat hit the moon surface. Let's see here. I think we'll just time it just right. Okay, so right off the bat, um, let's just take a look here. So you can't really see much of the moon. Uh, we're very close to it. Closer than I think most people would feel comfortable being, but... Hard to tell with that light. And, you know, it's like they say Elite Dangerous Odyssey was dark, but um, Kerbal is the ultimate in darkness in many ways. Uh, what's really dark is how many little green astronauts I've utterly destroyed over the years, just stranding them in the deep of space or killing them. Horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay, so we're going to just do this burn real quick. And then just right when we get near to the end, we will cut thrust and just just nuzzle the last bit out. We need to be pretty precise here because we don't want our periapsis getting below. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, 
Because if we get too far down, we will be literally like in the planet. Okay, and where is our craft? Oh no, we missed it. It looks like it, it already smashed in to the surface. Well done. Well, so now let's actually switch to the Sidewinder view and let's see how this looks coming over the horizon. Hopefully we don't like hit a hill on the way. Because yeah, I mean, even though the, the, these are like average surface whatevers but um you can certainly still find a little outcropping or an arch or something like that on the mun that will take you down take you downtown just do a quick check we are okay on our life support stuff uh i think the life support stuff also that's an attack uh tac life support or something uh it is a mod um so yeah you can't go faster than 10 times when you're below a certain altitude so kind of limits how fast we can go which is probably not a bad thing um but yeah life support added to this i think is like like the squad that made the uh the game put in like missions and stuff like that where it's like go to this specific area on the planet and take an altitude reading at seventeen thousand, and it's like they're not really that fun oh here we go here we go we got moonrise um but I think the life support mod adds a really cool dimension, even for sandbox, right? Like, give me unlimited resources, let me go explore, but my cribbles will only live and die based on um, if I've provided enough for them. And, you know, once you start having to add life support on your craft, I mean, that's... By the way, this is so cool. Sidewinder in space above the moon. Um, but once you have to start adding life support to your, your, your craft, it really takes up a lot of your, your weight, right? Okay, so here's what I'm thinking is, first of all, let's just let's get him in alignment there. Let's just get our sidewinder pointed in the direction they're traveling, so it, you know, it's like they're not using flight assist off here. This ain't rocket science, you know? Or wait, it is. Um, but yeah, look at our sidewinder, you've made it to the moon. But the question is, can we land on the moon? And I'm gonna say the answer is probably no, but I, it's my duty to try. So I'm gonna landing now. So what I'm thinking here is there, there's kind of like the best way to approach this is probably just to burn off all of our horizontal thrust and then point vertically and just allow a straight descent down. It's not really the most efficient, but I'm like just afraid at how ill balanced this sidewinder is and if we were to um uh try and do this the proper way it just like it's not gonna work out um whoa the game almost crashed on me there so really like what we want to do is first burn as much as this possible so we'll wait you know my problem is if we wait till we get to the full apoapsis are we out of view of Kerbin at that point can the pilots do this on their own, or are they going to freak out and say, no, we can't do it? Um, you can also consider, like, what is an interesting landing zone, or what looks like a good landing zone here. Eh, whatever. Um, I say we just try it now. Um, I've just saved, so we're good. Um, so what we're going to do is try and burn off our uh, horizontal velocity to zero. So we're just going to start throttling. What you'll see is that will quickly put us on the ground and sooner. But, um, you know, ideally, if we, if we were to go to zero speed there, we'll start picking up speed horizontally. But that makes it a lot, to be honest, a lot easier. Um, let me just turn my RCS on. That might help with some of the maneuvering thrusters. So you can see, like, that forward motion. That's easing out. Okay. So we're only 156 meters per second, but we're still mainly moving horizontally right we want to burn all of that off and we're going to see this um node rise to the top and we're out of fuel motherfucker um okay operation uh save someone <laughs> it's commencing <laughs> okay so we're controlling from the clampotron uh yeah i'm sorry uh bill and jebediah how did you get on this ship i thought i put the other two on there i didn't realize it was you guys okay well first of all we're gonna put because they're all going to die now. So, okay. You go into EVA. 
Uh, Bill, you go into EVA. Maybe somehow you'll survive by um, jetpack or something. Um, okay. And we are going to undock. And we are going to try to use RCS to save someone. This is Operation Someone Must Live. And oh my god. Okay, here we go. We might actually be able to also see the Sidewinder crash. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Poor Sidewinder. <laughs> oh no. It's everywhere. I mean, the rebuy can't be that bad. I try to land at least somewhat near. Now again, these monopropellant engines are wonderfully small, wonderfully compact. Let's just make sure our landing gear is... Uh, oh, this landing gear is motionless. Alright. Um, we're actually at least going to have someone survive, so I feel good about that. Okay. All right, now we got to check for survivors. I know Jeb was on, uh, and hold on, actually, before we do this, let's just go by the, <laughs> here's part of the wing. Here's part of the wing. Uh, we're gonna plant a flag in the name of uh, all that is dangerous and dangus, DeLacy. First Sidewinder. Um, may the souls of the Kerbals who died here forever be Dangus. Nice little eulogy. So this is where, yeah, we've planted a flag on the moon. We've, we've um, marked our spot. And there you can find the debris of the first Sidewinder. Um, don't, don't fall over like that. Which ran out of fuel, very close to landing on the planet. So now we can um, go over here and just check for survivors. Oops! Ow! 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 ow. It's four forty-five p.m. Shush. What's up? I know it's. I know what time it is. You know it. Uh, so I got my uh, Google uh, alerts or whatever set. And so yeah, you can land on the moon. You can plant flags, which you know, uh, lead dangas. What you doing? You should be able to plant a flag uh, for first footfall and wherever you landed it's like uh, a signal source or it adds a POI to that planet so we can still see okay some of the landing gear here is still in motion um, here's the main hulk of the and oh my god I think that's the cockpit so Jeb very unwisely exited but he there may be a survivor in here yeah I don't think Jeb survived because it would have been somewhere in here. There is a cardboard box, though, which is very useful. We're just going to push this out of the way. Hello! Is there any survivors in there? Let's just see here. Oh my god, there's Bill! Bill survived! We have two Kerbals on the moon! Oh my god! This is incredible. Okay. This is incredible. And... We have, like, a little bit of life support in here. No, oh, no. We're running out of oxygen real quick. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, two have survived. I mean, that's actually kind of impressive. Although, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. Like, did anything else survive? Like, did Jeb... Is Jeb one of the things that got flown up, flown up into orbit? Maybe he's still alive out there. Probably not. It's sad to lose Jebediah, but... Um, well, it's it's sad to really lose anyone. Uh, yeah, so, um, there you have it, folks. We've landed a Sidewinder on a moon. I didn't say what state it was going to be in. Um, now I think we just have our Kerbal Dance to Living in the 80s. If they would turn and face me. I think the problem is, like, the camera always wants to be behind them. There is, like, debris over there. I don't know if it's, like, worth, like, I, I guess it would be called, like, Jebediah Kerman. I think he died. He made the unwise decision to jump into EVI thinking that he could um, 
survive that way, but... Hmm. See, to be honest, I have more oxygen in this suit than, um, than I think Bob does in his inventory. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I think we'll, we'll, we'll call the stream there. Uh, EVA unavailable. What do you mean? Oh, we can't get out. What happened? Oh, there, there, there he is. There he is. Hey, Bill. <laughs> Watch yourself. Oh, he's only got four. He's only He's got less oxygen than you. That's not good. Well, maybe he can go in your lander. Yeah, we'll, we'll send Bill down there. Does he have any mono propellant? Yes, he does. Okay. Oops. Um. <laughs> I do love these girls. <laughs> Just taking a little spill. Well, we had two survivors of this incident. I did not think anyone would survive, so I'm a bit chuffed about that. Unfortunately, they are stranded on the moon, so maybe, maybe I could do another stream on this uh, later on and actually do like a rescue mission. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there's much more oxygen in here. Let me just go um, put the other one inside the ship too. That way she doesn't run out of oxygen while skulking around. But yeah. That's a Sidewinder, or was a Sidewinder. How cool is that? Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little, like, rendezvous into Kerbal. I mean, it's the... <laughs> Sorry, they just keep flopping around, it's so funny. I like how they have a little uh, suit. Oh, we'll take a surface sample with our mouth. Because we're eating, we're eating dirt here. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little romp into another game. I tried to still keep a connection to... Elite Dangus by building a Sidewinder, but it did get us there. It did um, do the job, right? So, oh yeah, you can't get in there. There's only space only space for one. Oh well. Um, at least you've got oxygen. At least when I exit the game, time will stop. But will we be able to rescue these Kerbals? Will they die on the Mun? Find out next time on Elite Kerbal... Kerbalology. Kerbalast... Kerbalastable? I don't know. I can't... I haven't come up with a good name for Kerbal. I was just doing this as a random one-off stream. But, oh, yeah, look at that. We're on the side of, like, a little crater there, too. We could build a moon buggy. Man, I love this game. What is this, uh... Debris, by the way. Just little bits and pieces of the ship everywhere. Well, there you have it, folks. That was fun, though. All right, well, thank you guys for, uh... For tuning in. I'll uh, see you guys on the next Dangus. I'll still do my regular Saturday stream. So this Saturday, uh, around you know 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I'll typically sort of fire that up. I think for this for this um, uh, next coming stream, I'll probably do some more rebuy challenges and try to rebuy myself in different ways. But 07, folks, and stay Dangus. Good night. <laughs>